All right, today's episode of the Nate Lamb Podcast is brought to you by Fabric, HelloFresh, Indeed, and Electric Bikes. Hello, folks, and <laughs> hey, Bear. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, I'm Dusty Slay, and I'm here with Brian Bates All and, right. and Aaron Weber. All right. Nate Bargatze will be joining us soon, uh, but we're going to go ahead and get started without him. Let's where's, do it. Where's your hat? I decided to do a hatless podcast. Hmm. How does it feel? You see a lot of my forehead. It's odd looking at you without a hat. Is it? Because a lot of people don't know this. You do wear a hat on stage. You wear it in public, but you also wear it all the time in your private life. Yeah, that's true. So this is an odd look for sure. Is it weird? I don't like it. Should I get a hat? <laughs> no, 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 no. You should keep it. I'll get a hat. You should keep it and honestly I'll keep see, it. Let's see if Nate notices. I was about to say, up. see if Nate even notices. All right. Well, I bet he will. I mean, uh, Abigail just noticed. Mm -hmm. She goes, Dusty, do you want a hat? Yeah. Well, she's more perceptive than <laughs> yeah. Nate, I think. Uh, but uh, You know Nate, dude. He gets in his own world. And he doesn't even look at us half the podcast. <laughs> half the podcast, he's looking between me and Dusty. That's true. At his own poster. At his own poster. <laughs> <laughs> at his reflection in the poster behind us. So I would be, be surprised if he doesn't even notice. Well, we'll see. You know, now I feel like his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he notices my my hair's a little different. <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, so this episode comes out while Nate is in Australia. Wow. So okay. um, comes out uh, July twenty sixth, I believe. So do you guys know where you've just been? <laughs> Yeah, I was just in. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Okay, so I would have been just in Orlando, Florida. I think. How'd it go? Oh, so good. <laughs> you I like mean, Florida? I do like Florida. I did a lot of walking around with my shirt yeah, off, yeah, out in public. And uh, by the time I, you know, come, you know, go to Florida though, uh, I will have be pretty tanned. I like to sit out in the backyard in a chair and get a tan. Oh, you're tanning naturally now. Yeah, sometimes I'll pass out. Uh, I'll pass out, you know, in my chair out back. You pass out in the sun. It's so comfortable out there that I'll fall asleep. Mm -hmm. I get that. So, well, I hope you, you know, hope you have fun in Florida. I had a great time. Okay. Uh, I had and will have a good time. I was in Ohio. Oh, where at? I did, in Mineral City, Ohio. Nice. Yeah, yeah, hang out there. Where is that? I don't know. Let's Min get in these comments. <laughs> <laughs> What about you? Where were you, Brian? Well, I don't think I was anywhere. Maybe I, I was working at a, yeah, yeah. a corporate. Yeah, corporate gig. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Ohio, though. I mean, I just booked a flight to uh, Columbus. Ohio's got a, a lot of big cities. So, like, there's a lot of options. Columbus is like the sixth biggest city in the country. Do you know that? Deceptively big. Deceptively big. Because, again, because I always base it on sports teams. And mm -hmm. they have a soccer team, I believe. They have an NHL team. Okay, yep. But no football, the, no baseball. None of the ones you care about. And no basketball. About. There you go. None of the ones you care about. Whereas, you know, Cincinnati's got football and baseball. Mm -hmm. Cleveland's got that. And it's bigger than both of them. If you don't have football, basketball. basketball, or baseball, I consider that a no sports city. Wow. <laughs> so you, you don't count the Preds for us. <laughs> now, the Preds are a, an exception. Okay. Okay. It's the only hockey team that's a real sport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not soccer. Now, obviously, it's a real sport. But, uh, you know, just growing up. There was three, three sports: mm -hmm. football, baseball, basketball. That was it. Yeah, and the soccer kids were kind of the kids that played soccer. Yeah, you'd be like, yeah. I played soccer when I was younger, and my dad often discouraged it. Why? I think my dad would rather me be on drugs than, than, play, than soccer. play soccer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever played golf? No. Would you ever? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I do a little. I've done a little putt putt here and there, but I don't even really. Well, that's enjoy half it. of it. Yeah, that's half of golf. Yeah, but I don't know that I really enjoyed it. No, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have fun playing with me and Brian. Very casual game. All right, I will smoking sit. cigars. I like to balls. I like to sit in a shade to have a cigar, but uh, you're in the golf cart, <laughs> yeah. shaded. If you know, if it were the three of us and there were nobody coming up behind us to mm -hmm. play, and and I think I could get in. I understand the anxiety of that, but if you get to a point where there's no one behind you, you're not in a rush. It's pretty great. Yeah, yeah, you would have fun. 
I'm a yeah, little. And you af- would hit it well once, and you'd be like, "Oh, I get it. That was fun to do." I'm a little afraid in a way that I might enjoy it, and then might be like, "Oh, I'd like to do that again." Oh, and dude. then I'm like, "What am I, a golfer now?" Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When I grew up, that was what the rich people did. Our family thought golf. That's snobby rich people. Uh huh. I still think that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> this podcast doesn't help does yeah it? no i mean this is this is like this is a part-time golfing podcast mm-hmm. you know i mean it's a comedy podcast but a lot of golf talk goes on here that's true like last the last episode we did, we're doing two in one day here the last episode we recorded nate was headed off to do like so when we gave our dates at the end you were like i'm going to this place i'm going to this and nate was like i'm going golfing <laughs> You know, it's like our gig. That's what you said. You transitioned to a professional golf yeah. at this point. Yeah, yeah. I think if Nate wins celebrity golf, I think he quits comedy and becomes a full time golfer. Yeah, uh, I think that would be him living the dream for yeah. sure. Yeah, I can't knock him. How weird would it be if the three of us were sitting like this when it was just the three of us <laughs> at a restaurant? I'm thinking this makes sense because we're waiting on Nate to take his seat. But if the three of us sat down at a restaurant like this, you'd be like, those people are insane, dude. Yeah, I've looked. <laughs> This is let me ask you this crazy blocking. I tweeted about this. Mm-hmm. We, we went to a restaurant the other night. I don't follow you on Twitter. Keep going. <laughs> That's why I'm telling it because I know this will be fresh to you. Um, and it was some crazy, this happens all the time, some crazy weight. Uh-huh. And then we have to ask, what well, could we sit at the bar? And they're like, oh, yeah, there's plenty of seat at the bar. Mm-hmm. You can go sit immediately. But they never, unless you ask, like, how bad do you think I need to look at my wife's face that I wouldn't <laughs> rather just sit at the bar and eat immediately than think, wait three and a half hours for a table? Well, three and a half hours. But I think people do like to sit at a booth yeah. across from each other. Well, ideally, but I think if you're alone, week. they will offer the bar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they almost push the bar. Oh, oh, I know. Yeah. If I have 48 alone. years of experience in that <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's who had you, a lot of meals at bars. Who are you to tell me what <laughs> yeah, they do to well. single people? I uh-huh. like the uh, the bar at a Waffle House. You ever eat at the bar at a Waffle House? That's what I usually do. Yes. Dusty made do fun it. of me for doing it. Really? I, did I make fun of you? I do I, it sometimes. I just talked about it. Yeah, I sit there. I feel like we're taking a booth. Depends on how busy it is. And 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 you're like, you mean you sit at the at the bar instead of sitting in one of the booths? Oh. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry I did that. Yeah, so watch your tongue. Dusty. I know. I'm watch sorry I did that. What's what I don't like is when you're in more than two people and you have to sit at a bar. And then it's tough to have conversation. Yes, it is. You know? Well, it's like for the if we're sitting at a bar like this, it's like Dusty. You, you're never going to talk to Brian because I'm in the middle. What are your feelings on couples sitting on the same side of the booth as each other? I think they should be taken out back and shot. <laughs> I love it. I do it, and I love it. You do it. You sit same side with Ruth. Okay. I dated God. one girl, and we would do that. We would get we would drink on our lunch break, and we would go and sit on the same <laughs> side of the booth. We were in love, and then we broke up, and she got married right after. So I think oh. I was in love with her, and she was. Seeing she was in love side. with love. She was seeing me on the side. Yeah, 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 I didn't mind it though. Sitting on the same side of the booth. Yeah. And did you hold hands? Did you? Yeah, I think we were like up in it. We were like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, those couples that they're like fifty years old and they're like still like real in love. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't <laughs> like it. Fifty years old or fifty uh, years married? Uh, let's say fifty years married. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My wife and I, I'm fifty and we still love each other. <laughs> I don't mean that you love each other. I mean like they still lovey dovey. Yeah, and they like make uh like jokes with each other, like about like making love and whatnot. Still in the honeymoon it's, phase. Yeah, and it's yeah, like, all yeah. right, guys, grow up. <laughs> right. You know, it's what a I mean? phase for a reason. You move on, you grow up, <laughs> yeah, become an adult. Yeah, it's like you don't have to dislike each other, but puppy love. That's yeah. what they call it. Yeah. Try to move past it. Now right. my only problem. When I sit at the bar at Waffle House, if I get too close to that cash register, the whole time I'm eating, there's people up there paying. So they're just leaning right oh, over you, yeah. you know, with their little little checks. Right, right. I never, I, I always just leave cash on the table at Waffle House. I like that. I like the feeling. I think that's a power move, dude. Leave cash. You just get up and leave and go see you. Yeah. And just leave it right I there. I like that, too. Yeah, it's a good feeling, dude. I like that, too. What's your order at Waffle House? I get a, well, you want to get into it? I'll get into well, it. Well, I'll share mine. Okay. I, I get the, the bacon, egg, and cheese, uh, the sandwich mm-hmm. with a waffle. And I get the hash browns covered. And that's it. 
and a black coffee. Interesting. Bacon, egg, and, and cheese water. sandwich, or you get bacon, eggs, and cheese. It's called like it's like the Texas toast sandwich. Oh yeah, I like that too. Yeah. I don't get the bacon on there, but I mm-hmm. like an egg and cheese. I also get the bacon, egg, and cheese hash brown bowl sometimes. Oh, okay. which is a lot of fun. I do the all star special. There you go. That pretty much covers all of it. Yeah, you get a waffle on there too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. it comes with it. Good stuff. I yeah. like a uh, patty melt at the Huddle House with hash browns. Huddle House. I love the Huddle House. Huddle House is either the beginning or the end of a bad day. <laughs> I feel like if you're eating at a Huddle House, you're either like, this day is going to be rough or I'm, I'm cooling down after a, a hard day. Well, I'll say that's true. When I lived on, in Charleston on James Island, we had a Huddle House. There was no Waffle House at the time. So no. my drives home from the bars... I would stop at the huddle house. Yeah. So you're right. I was cooling down from a, <laughs> from a hard day. <laughs> I feel like huddle house is like the white castle of waffle house. It's, it's similar to, um, crystal like, you know what I mean? But it's a little bit mm-hmm. more. Yeah. But I, I, I would say it's the crystal. I think the white house is, or white castle is the more prestigious. Oh, it is. Two. I think so. It's I got a movie so. about it. In the They're South, a little more rare. We grew up with Crystal, but yeah, I think White Castle is a... But even big, then, you knew Crystal was kind of trash food. For sure. Right? It was kind of like, I'm at rock bottom, let's have Crystal. I, yeah. yeah, but I, the White Castles in Nashville are even worse. Maybe. Maybe this is all about Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. That kind of raised the, the brand. But when you do get a movie, it, it's not Harold and Kumar go to Crystal. <laughs> That's <laughs> a much different movie. Yeah. <laughs> that is a much different film. I just don't see many huddle houses these days. Yeah, that, Harold and Kumar go to Crystal. Is the whole movie is police body cam footage? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what it is. It, like it is a dark movie. Yeah, the uh, you know um, I think Huddle House. You know they take time to find a good location, and you know really they want a good good spot. They won't just plop it down anywhere like a Waffle House. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. By the way, does coffee? Coffee's the perfect temperature for about five seconds. <laughs> it's too hot to drink, and then you you blink, and it's ice cold. Mm. Yeah. I can't figure it out. I can't need get a, the right temperature. You need a thicker mug. You think it's about the mug? Yeah, that's a thin mug. It's a mm-hmm. Nate mug, isn't it? Oh, Nate, we were just getting rolling. Oh, man. All right. It's good to see All you, right. dude. Look who's back. Who's back? No hat. We covered a lot of... Who, who are you talking about? I'm you? not wearing a hat. Oh, yeah. I'm going no hat. Uh-huh. Looks good. Uh, I like it. I think it's a good look. You just chose just, to go hatless. I just chose it. And then, because uh, <clears throat> I was late, I felt I needed to assert dominance. <laughs> and think I had no hat. Yeah. Assert said, I mean, you're all bundled up. You're scared. Yeah. <laughs> I am, man. You came in hot. You came in with an energy. That yeah. We were really, the last few mm. minutes, we've kind of built an atmosphere of like warmth and like caring about each other and like yeah. supportiveness. And mm-hmm. you shattered that within That's, the first well, five seconds. Well, I mean, dude, I could, uh, downstairs... I had to get, because uh, I, I, I had to get a look at these clothes, because I have to wear these clothes for the golf thing. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, and he's got to leave. I'm sure you already said. I don't know. You, to, you got a big show tonight. Mm-hmm. So he's got to leave. And then, uh, but I mean, I could hear downstairs just a little bit, and it just sounded like the boring conversation Joe would have. <laughs> <laughs> like when I'd be in the bedroom and I hear y'all in the, so what do you. How'd it go last time? Or, you know, <laughs> all that. You just all talk, uh, all podcast stuff already. Like, you uh-huh. get it out of the way. Yeah. Like, we'll be downstairs and we're like, well, this is all we should talk about upstairs. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're just waiting. We don't know what to talk about. We should turn the TV on. Yeah. Yeah. That's what this should be. No, downstairs. Uh, we're just us watching we're TV. Really, <laughs> yeah. 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 We're really debating if Crystal is like Waffle House or Huddle House. <laughs> Versus White Castle is Huddle House or Waffle House. All right. We would say, my family would say White Castle is Waffle House. Meaning the better. Yeah. 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 It's the more prestigious of the brands. Right? Yeah. Right. So yeah. you had it backwards, All I right. think. That's yeah. We right. never ate Crystal. I mean, they it's like a big deal in Louisville. Like you eat yeah. White House and you don't eat White Castle. You don't eat uh, Crystal. Oh, and Opelika I mean, always had like, Crystal. Yeah. Well, it's understandable. That's yeah. But it's like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're lucky yeah. to even have that. Yeah, well, we were. I don't think <laughs> yeah. they have it now. We were lucky to have it for a yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you go in? Y'all go in there and eat? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Go in, go to the drive thru. I took a, I remember I was dating a girl one time and uh, she yelled something rude to the girl in the drive thru at mm-hmm. Crystal and I just drove off. I was like, now nah, we're not gonna, yeah, we're not gonna be eating there today. <laughs> yeah. I'm not eating their spit because of you. Then you drove into a river. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> my wife went to college with either uh, Harold or Kumar from Harold or Kumar went to go to White Castle. Oh yeah. Or the actor? <laughs> yeah, not Carl Penn, is that his name? Yeah. Cal uh, Penn, I think. Cal Penn. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's great. Is he in like politics now? Yeah. Is he really? No, he's not. Yeah, he, he, Obama he was like he was like in the Obama administration. Yeah. That's him. No. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. From White Castle to the White House. Yeah. I I love White Castle. I I love it. I don't think I've ever had it. It's I, I mean I get no onions on it, but it's <laughs> that's the only modification. I would do that at Crystal too. I've eaten uh, it a lot, it's but very, man, I'm in the I most. love it. Yeah. I love White Castle. I uh, it's uh, would you like a White that, Castle burger if it were the same size as a regular burger? Uh, I think you'd be like, this is a weak burger, but yeah. because it's a bunch of small ones, mm. you think it's good. The original slide. Yeah, really. to be honest, with you, I like. I like a nice bad burger. Like yeah. uh I, I like a concession stand oh, burger. I, I like, like a concession uh, stand burger. burger. You know, one like that's that. like you definitely was frozen, like all wrapped that. in like, aluminum foil. Yeah, yeah, you're oh, like, yeah. oh nice yeah. Nice and hot. Yeah. Probably some microplastics yeah. in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. That's, that's the I... least you worry about. Yeah. <laughs> that that hopefully just sets off some of the other stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need microplastics. Yeah. You take a vitamin of microplastics. <laughs> Uh yeah, I I'm a big uh big White Castle fan. It would be that'd be the one like I would go through and you know if Laura wasn't home and I was like you know I'm gonna go get some food like get some bad food. I would do if I had like a couple days of it, uh you know McDonald's and I'd be like all right let's do White Castle. Just order more burgers than I would eat just to make sure we don't run out. Yeah yeah you don't want to be wishing you had one more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I'd rather, mm-hmm. I would rather just be, I'm going to throw up if I have one yeah. more, but I have five more. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. week I quit drinking, that week I was in, I stayed in Brooklyn for a few days and I would, when I would get off my- Brooklyn, Alabama? Yeah. Yeah. Georgia. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah. and the night I would get off the subway and my walk back to my buddy's place, I would pass a White Castle and every night I stopped and got six- White Castles and some fries and ate that every night. And then later that week, I quit drinking and never drank again. So uh, You think White Castle helped it? Maybe. Yeah. The White Castle was like, listen, change your life. Yeah, mm-hmm. it pushed you to rock bottom <laughs> yeah. so you could turn your life around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then I took a picture and I looked like Peter Griffin. And I was like, well, I better <laughs> lose some weight here. Yeah. Better get it together. You did all that together at the same time? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it worked? It did work. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I would get term life insurance from Fabric by Gerber Life yeah. to help protect your family. You Fabric go. was designed by parents for parents to help you get a high quality, surprisingly, before <laughs> I really derailed the conversation. No, 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 that's all right. Term yeah, yeah, life yeah, insurance a, policy in less than 10 minutes. I'm sure this ad appreciates that. <laughs> <laughs> Fabric's new lower price could mean big savings over other providers with quality policies like a million dollars in coverage for less than a dollar a day. Whoa. It takes less than 10 minutes to apply, see your quote, and then personalize your quote to fit your family's needs. You could be offered coverage instantly with no health exam required. It's a 30-day money-back guarantee. Counsel at any time. Hmm. All right. Fabric is partnered with Gerber Life, trusted by millions of families over 50 years. Protect your family today with Fabric by Gerber Life. Apply today in just 10 minutes to meet fabric.com slash Nate. That's meetfabric.com slash Nate, M-E-E-T, fabric.com slash Nate. Policies, policies issued by Western Southern Life Assurance Company, not available in certain states. Price is subject to underwriting and health questions. Uh, just we, we, sure. we yeah. should we jump in. Start yeah, yeah. comments. Uh, Gentry Overton. A few weeks ago, I was walking down the street in Queens, New York City, and a man rode past me on a bike and yelled, I love Nate Land. And that's honestly the closest I've felt to anyone in this city. Thanks for bringing us together. Also, where can I get the Nate Bargetti Show hat? Honduras. Honduras. Did uh, Wherever Buffalo oh. Bill Super Bowl <laughs> shirts are sold. Oh, man. That's a dig. That's funny. Yeah. Why did they yell, I love Nate Land? At it? Yeah, I don't Was know. Was Gentry wearing a Nate Land sweatshirt or Maybe. t-shirt? Yeah. Yeah, Gentry should give a little more detail. Yeah, I think that was an important detail. Yeah. Gentry left out of this comment. Uh, it's all fun. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe the yeah. person in the car wasn't even yelling it at Gentry. Yeah. Just was so excited <laughs> about the podcast. I love Nate Land! <laughs> yeah. 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 We, uh, yeah, the Nate Borghetti show hat. There's not, there's that one. 
they don't really exist. Show doesn't exist. <laughs> but yeah, we get some. I don't know. We could just make a bunch more of a show that never went. That could be fun. We could just mail that one. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to keep one. Oh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, golly. <laughs> Or just sit on my, I don't know, sit on your, your blankets from your bed. <laughs> what's the matter with you, Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> when he says it, because yeah. what's the matter with you? Yeah, he said it a few times. Yeah. Uh, Laney White. <laughs> I'm a flight attendant for Southwest, and I'm Ooh. curious why Dustin thinks the boarding process is the worst. Is it the open seating policy part or the boarding group in number? Every time I walk past another airline, boarding a flight it just looks like complete chaos to me thanks for the laughs and the escape from reality i will say it is a bit more orderly with southwest uh it does look like chaos boarding on other flights but it is the open seating and boarding group and number the problem is like one time i was like waiting on food at a restaurant in the airport and i was i was with southwest and i had a very early i was like i was like a2 or something mm. so i'm like i got a good spot mm. my food was taking a long time and i'm like i was worried that if my food didn't come in time i was gonna miss and not have that a2 spot oh, yeah. and be boarding late oh, whereas yeah. with american airlines i have my seat number and i could be the last one on the plane yeah i'm still gonna get my seat mm -hmm. that's why i like it and i also don't like be if i'm like a4 i don't like being up there looking at people's ticket going are you are you a5 are you because yeah, yeah. i would like to if you're a5 i'm gonna get in front of you that's God, why god you... forbid you talk to regular people at the airport yeah what do you do <laughs> what do you do to not talk to people about i'm gonna see if, i know what i do what would you do to not talk to people about the your boarding number Oh, I would just have it out on my phone so that people can see it. Yeah. Oh, that's but I do. I open up I the Southwest app and yeah. just kind of hold it. Like and you that. hold it. Yeah, but if that only helps you. But if you're trying to find your spot. Yeah, but that. Uh, but I mean, I see it enough that enough people. I think a lot of people do that. A lot of people you do that. You just out. like you. You just sit there with like your boarding pass, just like. <laughs> You know, so they know. I guess you could go. You can usually peek around and see someone's thing because yeah. everybody's kind of got it out. You could go, hey, I've never flown Southwest before. Is A1 good? Is that a good <laughs> yeah. spot? Oh, yeah. I would hate you if you did that. <laughs> well, that's when you, if you do get like an A1 and then, I mean, you see everybody staying there the last minute, you just plop up. Or you see like number fives waiting and there's no A1 through four. Yeah. If you could be a group of four that goes up in front of that guy, uh, you know, yeah. he's like, dude, I think I'm about to be. A1 <laughs> and then just how about and then like, you're like nope well that the only thing I don't like is that when they the people that are on the plane like if you get on a plane and there's already people on it that they can take they can take the better seats so I've had I've been up there where you're like A1 or 5 where you're like you have a shot at you know, mm -hmm. picking your seat and you get on there and you're like, X rows all taken, fronts taken, everything's taken because well, the exit on, rows can't be taken. They, I've seen them pre board, pre boarders aren't allowed that, but they're the people, uh, oh, people from flight, the previous flight. Oh, okay. A through yeah. flight, they, yeah. they go once it gets up, you're allowed to get up and like they have that's a buzzkill. That's the that's mm -hmm. the if you're like the ultimate Southwest flex would be to be a one, uh. Well, you know, I guess it'd be to be handicapped. <laughs> that's the <laughs> ultimate flex. I mean, that's a, you're you're killing it there. <laughs> you're gonna get on so early. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, but if you're a one and then you're a through flight, because then you could you get a you're 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 mm. you're just gonna you probably go stay in your seat. But I mean, if you want to move, you can do whatever you want to do. Or either just helping someone in a wheelchair. If you're like the person with a person in a wheelchair, oh, it's yeah. like I don't know. Why don't you let someone else board yeah. them you don't you don't yeah. get on early i yeah. think the number behind you should have to push the wheelchair <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. how it works yeah. that's a good idea yeah they go a1 should push it they yeah. go uh, here's yeah. who pushes wheelchair well we go down the list a one two three four and everybody <laughs> you know and then it makes the people that are the uh fancy people mm -hmm. uh they actually have to do some work right, right. you know yeah. and mm -hmm. uh they appreciate more of where they stand yeah I agree with that. Okay. All right. So, uh, Laney, let's get that going. Mike Shive. Shiv. I moved from Pennsylvania to Murfreesboro, 
Pencil, I guess because I say it. It's spelled yeah. P-I-N-N. Uh-huh. I think he's playing off Penguin and Yeah, Bengals. Pennsylvania to Mercerboro, Tennessee in 1980. And my history teacher, Miss Taylor, had a heavy southern accent. My first day, she asked my name, and I said, Mike is my northern, in my northern accent. She said, Blake? I said, no, Mike. Blake? No, Mike. This went back and forth several times to another kid in the class yelled, Mike. Miss Taylor said, oh, Mike. I then knew how to say my name in Mercerville, Tennessee. I think of this every time as you <laughs> pronounce names. Mike. Mike. He's walking around going, hi, Mike. I'm Mike. <laughs> now, Mike. Mike. Yeah. Mike. Mike. It almost sounds like Mark Man, in a Boston Man, do we say accent. Mike weird? It's the A's and I's. Yeah. Yeah. We do. Mike. So, just Southerners in general. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean by we. Uh... <laughs> Podcast I didn't know if you meant oh, I, yeah. well, or Alabama, you're Tennessee. I didn't know. Oh. Well, because I thought you meant because you don't say penguin the way we say it. Oh, I forgot. Or Bengals. Yeah. Or... Well, that's just like it. That's just edu- education. Education. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's an education thing. <clears throat> We're in the back. We're in the back by the trash cans. <laughs> oh, Mark. Mark. <laughs> Mark. Don't get on it, Mark. Mike has two syllables. Jennifer Addison. My 13-year-old son and I are obsessed with your podcast. We can't wait till Wednesday to hear the new episode. Our favorite game to play while driving to school is to see who can come up with the best name for bacon breath baits. <laughs> That's pretty good. It's not easy to find something to do with a 13-year-old where he doesn't think you're lame. Thank you so much for keeping them coming. Well, right. that's what you're doing to teach your son is to make fun of me? Yeah. Bully. Yeah. Bully the elderly. Yeah. Come Bully on, Bates Jennifer. Come is on. another one. Yeah. Bully Bates. Yeah, I, I like it, Jennifer. Good for you, Thank Jennifer. You. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks Bonding for Bonding yeah. experience. We've bonded over bullying. We appreciate yeah. it. Bonded Who's your bully? Bates. Bully Bates. Bonded yeah. We bonded over bullying bully. Bates. <laughs> uh, bonding <laughs> Bates bully. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. I would never have bacon breath around Dusty. Yeah. I respect. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That would be rude. Why? He doesn't eat bacon. Oh, you don't? Yeah. yeah. Why? Yeah. I forget. Well, I don't, don't eat like real the reason. taste of it. Oh, you do. Yeah. Oh, but there's probably no, a little more. Of that. Yeah, that's not. I love the taste. The taste is delicious. It's all right. But yeah, it's all right. There's probably a little more. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I yeah, probably we don't have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 No, 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 no. We have talked about it earlier on this podcast when you said you wouldn't have bacon. Yeah. On your. I just yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, I think yeah. I think we've talked about it before. Yeah. Okay. It's not. It's, it's not good. that big of a deal. It seems good. more serious now, <laughs> yeah. and I'm not offended. But it, when you talk about why it, it gets more serious, well, I don't think you're offended. I just think there's some things that you're like, yeah, let's maybe not talk about the why don't eat bacon one. <laughs> like there, you're, you're just some of your stuff is like, yeah, let's have some fun, make some jokes, and then some stuff's like, let's not really probably go into that. One. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You kind of know which ones are going to be like, eh, this is a lot. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I think I know. Uh, <laughs> Kirk DePaul. That's why I was trying to move on from it. I, got... I feel like we've done a good job of moving yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kirk, De- <laughs> Kirk DePaul. DePaul. That's a great last that name, is. man. Kirk yeah, is. DePaul. DePaul. How oh, that family's like that. Because there's a chance they might not be <laughs> the DePauls. The De like it's a little more like that. But if you're like De Kirk, and I would think with a first name Kirk, it's like Kirk what's your name, Kirk? It, <laughs> it almost sounds like yeah. Kapow. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> DePau. Who? And it's a bunch of them, dude. There's a bunch the, of the Pow Boys. Yeah. yeah. Dusty mentioned liking the question mark with the exclamation point, making the question that much better. Well, I'm here to let you know there's a punctuation mark for that. And it's called the interrobang. It combines the two one symbol, allowing you to ask questions with authority. Love the podcast. Keep up the great work educating the masses. Uh, so this is why there's a comedy yeah. website. Yeah, I, I didn't know interrobang was an actual thing, but the, yeah, the great oh, stand Look who oh. just got DePal <laughs> by Kirk DePal. You didn't know he's teaching. The teacher stuff. Uh-huh. So that is what. So when you put an exclamation point and a question mark, it's called interrobang. It's interrobang. It's through it. It's not oh. side by side. It's actually through yeah. It. So it's a question. It's just literally just the two of them on top of each other. Yeah, I didn't know that. I'm gonna be honest. I don't think people are gonna get that. I think if you put that in a sentence, I don't it looks think like people the are gonna symbol for know Prince. what that is. Yeah, I, don't I th- think you did it accidentally. I think you put them side by side. You would go like, "Wow, you got excited there." Yeah. And this is a new invention. 
Oh, you're just trying to defend yourself because you didn't know it. No. no, When was it invented? 1962. (laughs) You should have known that, dude. (laughs) You're acting like it was invented in 2015. That's a new (laughs) invention. Yeah. 1962 has been... As long as the English language has been around, dude, 1962 is new. I know, this but is a Johnny been, come lately of punctuation. Yeah, but this is you read some old book or something that had this in it. You didn't notice it. I've never seen this. I can't believe it's been around since 1962, and I've never seen it. Yeah, it's not on the keyboard. I don't think y'all are reading. You're reading the things that. Yeah, that'd be a hard one to type in. Yeah, got to do them both at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and you can use a reverse oh, upside also, down in Terabang for Spanish. I also think I've been thinking this lately that we got to get the at symbol and the hashtag off of a shift key. It needs to be its own key. That is now entered the language as something we use all the time. It needs its own key. Uh, I think add. I don't know about hashtag. But you know, I mean, are you doing a hashtag that much? I don't, but I feel like it. It does get used. A yeah. Lot. Well, you know, the exclamation the, point the is sh- also a shift key. You yeah. think we need to take that out too? <laughs> yeah, I think it needs its own key. I think people use at more than they use the exclamation. Do you think point. you just need to learn how to type a little better? Is what it <laughs> yeah. feels like. I just. Say I it. agree with you on the at. The at. I mean, you're putting ad in everywhere. Mm-hmm. I agree with that, but you're not saving any time by taking it off a of shift. Yeah. Yeah, you're just hitting a boom. I don't need to have to go like this. Well, you shouldn't. Why are you doing it like that? (laughs) Use all your fingers, man. We didn't learn typing like at the. Yeah. I mean, not, like typing was like all said, the letters weren't there. When it was I took a, typing. yeah. When we took typing, it was a class. Like it <laughs> yeah. was, it was something that you just did that you're like, why would I waste my time doing this? Yeah, yeah my typing coach was the aus- or, or was the football coach. My typing mm. teacher, he wasn't. He probably <laughs> didn't even know how to type. <laughs> Still yeah. bang him keys, boys. Yeah. And he looked at this and goes, "You ain't gonna worry about this." Stuff. Yeah, he <laughs> <laughs> ain't gonna be no assistant. <laughs> and then Dusty drove his car into water. Uh, <laughs> Grant D. Morgan. In a few days, I'll be playing in a golf Ironman, which is where we play a hundred holes in one day. We do this to raise money for an organization that helps at-risk youth. I'm curious, what is the most holes of golf Nate has played in one day? Uh, 18, 18, 36. 54? Yeah. Maybe, I, 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 I don't That's know. If I, I don't ever golf, remember. Man. I've played 36, and then what's another nine? Be 40. Probably something like that. You know. 45? Yeah. Maybe a little bit. Maybe 54, maybe 45, something like that. Me and Derek did that so one So you're time. playing all day if you're doing 100 holes. I mean, that's. Yeah. So they do it like for this. I mean, I look, if they're, I don't know if they're walking or not. I mean, you'd have to run. I mean, that would be that's some real chafing. That's some real, yeah, that's real deal. But like, There's no way in a cart, I could, yeah. I mean, I, I'd be fun to go do. I mean, you just, I love that this is like we're doing it to help at risk youth, but it's like, yeah, you, but you're doing a thing you really like doing. Oh, of course, you know, yeah. Well, that's what all charities support. usually are, is it? Yeah, well, if you're doing it's, it's a, you're trying to make people go. That's why people book acts for a charity, like, or. Are like acts get paid a lot of times for charity stuff because you have to put in a everybody can't do give everything away for charity. like so like you know it's in a sense it's a, it can be a slippery slope I'd imagine but if you can do you have to do these benefits you have to do these things yeah that are like yeah you got to pay to get this person to then raise enough money for this thing the ones that raise the four others that I just did. uh I mean, they raised twelve million dollars for, uh, and it's for, it's like with the adoption and like, uh, and a lot of the kids that are, are, are later in life that you know get kind of lost. And this four others does an amazing thing uh, where they help kids out, and because these kids are, I think, going to be lost in the system. And uh, but I mean, dude, they raised, and it was like I like I'm not saying me, but like I went up and like Carrie Underwood saying and. It's like we would do golf during the day. So it's this big, big event, which a lot of people donate their time for that event uh, just because it's in Nashville and it's all for this thing. But they raise they raise $12 million, which wow. is crazy, wow. dude. Crazy. Dude. That is wild. But a lot of charity stuff, yeah, I think you have to, you know, like you got to make it something where people are like, yeah, yeah, I'll go do, you know. And that's like a fun thing. But, yeah. It's all right. Uh, <clears throat> You should say not. You don't want people to do fun things. Yeah, make yeah. it hard. Yeah, let's be hard. Let's, re- let's really give it a charity. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're really gonna do it. Suffer it. These kids are at risk. You should be at risk. Yeah, do something that run with the bulls. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Run slower than you normally would. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dan, all, all ball, all ball. This guy's all ball. All ball. <laughs> all ball. <laughs> all ball. Al this ball. guy, this guy does a hundred holes a day of golf. Yeah, that's for sure. No, uh, he blocks shots. Yeah, I mean, if they call a foul, ball. he's like, "Oh, ball!" <laughs> yes, oh, yes. Are ears part of the face? My friend group debated and ended in a split decision. Please help us settle this. Ugh. Uh, I'm number friends. I'll yeah. just give you a gut, just from the hip reaction. No, I don't think it is. I think it's part of the head. I yeah. think when I think face, I think eyes, nose, mouth. That's what it is. I don't care. Well, I have a... (laughs) Go ahead. I have a small child. (laughs) And so the song, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Yeah. And then it says eyes and ears and mouth and nose. So it's including those in that song. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to go, yes. Can you sing it for us? You know how it goes. I I can sing it very well. Uh... So I'm the deciding vote then. Yeah. We got one no, one yes, and one, one I don't, don't care. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> For the same reason as Dusty, I'm gonna have to say yes. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, because of that song. Yeah. Uh that was fun. <laughs> uh we did that for charity. Yeah. Yeah. Nate did. Yeah. We gotta do a hundred of those in one day. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Luke Ricard. Michael Jordan. Announced he was coming out of retirement to play for the Wizards on September 10th, 2001. The next morning at school, my sixth grade teacher ran into the room and said something like, Oh my God, you guys, we have to turn the TV on. Something crazy has happened. I stood up on the chair of my desk, put my fist in the air and yelled, Michael Jordan's coming back. Obviously, I felt terrible when she turned the TV on and we all saw the World Trade Center burn. Yeah, that's <laughs> I didn't know he announced that that day. I looked it up. It's not quite that. He announced it on September 25th, but on September 10th, the New York Times had an article saying it's all but a done deal. He's going to announce it any day now. Oh. And then the World Trade Centers happened the next day, and he delayed his announcement. And then when he did announce it a couple weeks later, he said he's going to donate part of his salary to the yeah. victims. Yeah, yeah. So, Are they all, he might have donated all his salary. Maybe. I can't remember, yeah. but... Uh, I did not remember it being that close. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's like tough, two different even. times. Yeah. Like oh. Two different time periods. Uh, no, nah, like, oh, him playing. <clears throat> yeah. Nah. Cause Michael Jordan almost feels like 98. It feels like the nineties and then nine yeah. 11. And then we're in the world we're in now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's how it feels in my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's crazy how different it is after nine 11. I just talked about that with someone. About like flying and you, I mean, you could go to a, a, the, just the gates. Yeah. That's crazy. It's like, yeah. you could just, I've never, I never flew pre nine 11. So I've never seen, but I see old, like there's an episode of friends that I just saw where they're at the gate. Oh. I'm like, what is happening right here? This Watch Seinfeld. I mean, Kramer runs on a plane at one point <laughs> and then he just gets on. <laughs> he just talks, his, he just runs on. And he's like, I'm late. And like, uh-huh. he's going to just leave. He just popped on. For, let me say hi to someone. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, insane. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I, I remember flying. I support it. I like that. I didn't fly much. I flew, I flew when I, we were five years old. Uh, and I don't really remember that. And then I flew again, not till after high school, probably. Uh, I think. And I remember flying, I do remember flying before 9-11. And uh, I think, I remember having an ID, someone else had a ticket. Mm-hmm. I might have told, I don't know if I told this story, but it's like someone else had a ticket uh, from my other buddy from high school and this guy couldn't go to this trip. They were going to like Vegas or something. And then it was like, well, I could just use their ticket. And then so I just used his ID and... uh I like I used his ID and just was going to yeah. use it and fly. You'd be and it almost worked. Bay now, if you try to yeah. do that now, oh, <laughs> I mean, it'd be crazy. But it was like not that crazy to try that. Yeah. Do you not think you could do that now, though, if you look like that person? I really didn't. But okay, that's what that's <laughs> yeah. the thing. I mean, I kind of like in a little bit, but not much. But and I remember she was like, "You just also need your social security because I think you needed two. Like I guess she was like, "We need your social security card too." And so then that's when I was, uh, I was really trying to get him to come up and bring the social security card, but that's, uh, that's a trustworthy friend. Well, yeah, it didn't happen, 
But I mean, I remember like going through that much. I mean, dude, it's insane. Like how just loose everything was. Very recent. Mm -hmm. Especially now. I mean, this guy at the airport, they told, they got new machines in the Nashville airport, which is pretty annoying. And I was talking to a guy about it, and he goes, well, these machines can tell the difference between a stick of C4 and a candle. And I'm like, so the other machines couldn't <laughs> do that? Yeah. We could have been sneaking C4 in the whole time, and we've not had a plane blow up because of C4? Is mm. that really a problem? I think what he's saying, because you've told that story before, is... <laughs> <laughs> just, just. I've like, heard the story numerous times, yeah. so let me answer it for you. <laughs> just, yeah, it's old. I mean, just, just of, like stenographer beta. It, it just sounds like an old married couple, and like the one that's already lost his person mind, and the other one that's like almost there but hasn't yet. What Dusty's trying to say yeah. is, well, for, I've heard it a few times because I listen to his other podcast and. I think he's just saying the Wait, old, you haven't heard it on this podcast? I've heard it on this podcast oh. and his other podcast oh, okay. and a few times just in conversation. <laughs> um, he's got the memory of a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Bates remembers everything. He can't get nothing by. <laughs> I think the guy's just saying in the past with the old machines, they would have had to stop if you had a candle in there and check your bag, and it would have been slower. Now with these new machines, they can tell. That's a candle. It's not explosive. So go Enough through. people are flying with candles that we got to... Well, you just use that as an example. But the I machines think. are slower. So it's like, really, they're slowing us down with the machines. Mm -hmm. I'd rather them just check the bag and go, oh, it's just a candle. I go, yeah, yeah but just... they can't look at, you know, you can make a bomb look like a candle. I guess so. Mm -hmm. But now they can tell. Yeah, now they know. Mm -hmm. now, and, and, you know, good thing. Yeah. I love the new machines. I'm sorry I've been repeating so many stories. Yeah, yeah. Because there's only so much to talk about. I'm a little scared uh, to bring something up now. Yeah, I don't know uh, if it's, you know. You just don't. He's got a great memory. We're, we're 450 episodes into this. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember what we talked about. Well, it was, uh, that's what, the, when we were going on the road, it was like the greatest because Bates would remember everybody we've met, yeah. everything, and he's like, remember this? I was his did. handler, like the guy who leans in. I was about to say, <laughs> in, in V. Yeah. But, yeah, was, leads. but yeah. flawless. Aaron Weber. Yeah. He bombed. You remember that yeah. show? I was like, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. But you're really great at it. Well, it thank you. A, it is a skill. Steel trap. Thank you. Yeah. It's thank got you. a great memory. Uh, I care about people. You guys should try it. All right. Uh, Reverend <laughs> Keith Burney. When I was finishing my time in seminary uh, at the Catholic University of America in D.C., right. that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing. Uh, where'd you, uh, uh, well, I took seminary at the Catholic University of America in DC. You're like, all right, man. <laughs> you know, did you? You got to like almost like do the Pledge of Allegiance to that guy. Yeah, at this yeah. point, go ahead and say District of Columbia. Yeah. <laughs> Just say I run the world. <laughs> yeah, he goes. This guy's unbelievable. Uh, I attended the commencement where I earned my master's degree. That year's speakers were Jim and Jenny uh, Jenny Gaffigan. I thought I'd mention it to give Aaron the hope that one day, if he continues to work hard and climb through the ranks of comedians, he could one day be given the address at Notre Dame's graduation. Of course, that's if Nate doesn't decide to convert to Catholicism and beat him to the punch. Mm. That would upset me. <laughs> My parents are, were, are Catholic. Yeah. So, I mean, I could be. I was just going to go back at any time. I know, well, yeah, but, yeah. but my parents are Catholic. Can't I just be? Well, the commencement speaker this year is Juan Manuel Santos, former president of Colombia and winner of the 2016 Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> they hand those out. <laughs> <laughs> the Peace Prize. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who was the speaker when you graduated? Uh, ooh, Ray Hammond II, founder of Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church. Well, no offense to Ray, but look who was before, right before you. I mean, it was a who's who. Obama was uh, Obama, 2009. I was at that. That's the year my brother graduated. I was yeah. at that speech. Oh, really? It was very controversial at the time. Like, it was crazy. The yeah. campus was wild. Dude. Was he already president? He or? was president, yeah. Why? Yeah. All right. Let me know. Uh, there's just controversy yeah. whether he should be given an honorary degree oh, from at, a Catholic university. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So there were protesters everywhere. Yeah, yeah. But he, uh, he can give a speech, man. I wonder if... Uh, what? Well, he can, but that's yeah. funny. No, no, I'm talking about. Yeah, he's good at it. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Saying. Oh, I know. Yeah. I wonder if my parents are because they are Catholic. Does that count? Like, is it? Could I just? Could he be Pope? Could I come in? 
You know, like you people could. are Irish, like half Jewish or, you know, something. Yeah, I mean, this I'm, thought, you couldn't pick up Catholicism on a genetics test, though. You know? Yeah, so then anybody can become Catholic. Right. You'd have to retest, 100%. though. 100%. It's right. a universal So church. what if I became Catholic? And then... That'd be, gonna be great. Yeah, you could do it. But then And then I took your spot. <laughs> but you don't have to be Catholic, you clearly. You the first pitch there at the game, <laughs> Obama's not Catholic. Yeah. Right. Yeah, clearly they're letting everybody do it. What about Peg, Peggy Noonan? I don't want to follow Bartholomew, one of Constantinople. <laughs> that was the Archbishop of Constantinople. Yeah. Yeah, that seems like a hard follow. And canceled to the <laughs> pandemic. I bet he was relieved. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he looks like at the age I was like, oh, thank goodness. Like, you know, I, the, the last thing I want to do is go talk to these dumb kids. <laughs> Uh man, Notre Dame really goes a lot. W two thousand one. Yeah, he ain't H W in ninety two. Wow, two thousand one. You don't have to be Catholic to be to give the commencement address. That's peak George W. Bush. That's when he threw out the first pitch. Oh yeah, two thousand one. He was making his rounds. Oh mm. yeah, dude. He was on a, a tour of a lifetime at yeah. that point. Uh, Robin W. When you're when you tour in Australia and New Zealand, do you have uh to change any of your material for? Them to make it more relatable. For example, do they have Walmart there or other American stores, restaurants? Uh, I I don't. I mean, I would never change it. If I did change it, I would acknowledge that I'm changing it. Or I would say this, you know, I, I would be like, I know y'all don't have Walmart, but, you know, it's like y'all's buckies or yeah, I don't mm-hmm. know. But <clears throat> usually you don't. I mean, if they're coming to see you, then they already are going to get it. And so you think, though, you always do at the beginning, you think I got to change all this stuff. And you're like, these crowds are smart, dude. They're not. I got to change bathroom to water water closet. (laughs) Yes. To the loo. Like they're not going to get it. Mm -hmm. And you're like, no, they they get it. They're smarter than me. I like water closet. That's how I'd like Mm -hmm. to refer to it. Excuse me. I'm just going to step away to the water closet. That's what it's called. Is it? A lot of the world. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Like, I'll take some. Water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, can you get me a glass? Dude, you don't he want goes, any of this. No, man. we don't have water in this village, but <laughs> there we have a water closet. Yeah. Uh, Spencer Sh- Schofield. Melbourne is pronounced Melbun or Melbin. Hmm. Never pronounce it Melbourne. The locals don't like it. I'm from Tasmania. Tasmania. Uh, I mean, that's what it's <laughs> Tasmania, the island below mainland uh, Australia. I will say it the wrong way out loud when I arrive, just to get some look from them. Just get some looks from them. All right, Melbourne, Melbourne. Why did they spell it like Melbourne then? Um, I don't think the R means as much over in Australia. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, they never take like it serious. Just an accent thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, they don't like it. It's Melbourne. Like- Take it either. <laughs> from yeah. out of town. Man. Yeah, I'm yeah. not from here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe people say my name wrong all the time. Yeah. I've never I could care like, you know, what was who am I? Well, you know, that's what people told me about uh um Montreal. They were like, Oh, they really hate it if you don't speak French. They really hate it. And I was so nervous. Nobody cared. Yeah. Nobody cared. I bet I bet Spencer's letting us know like they are gonna talk talk pretty hard behind our back <laughs> yeah like it, it's like yeah dude they're gonna be nice people you're never gonna experience it but just give you a heads up they're like furious yeah and they're gonna you're gonna be talked about at that table australia table. reddit will be blowing up yeah. Oh, yeah yeah it's good to know though like so you didn't take them out of a joke like if you're telling a joke yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. You mispronounce yeah. it they'll be Melbourne. thinking about that yeah 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 it's like saying louisville you know most people say louisville but it's louisville louisville louisville, louisville. louisville. L- least enunciation possible. Yeah. Okay. Hello, folks, to HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That is why it's America's number one meal kit. When you need dinner fast, don't call for delivery. Think HelloFresh. Their fast and fresh recipes are ready in just 15 minutes or less. Plus, HelloFresh is 25% cheaper than takeout. And you don't have to tip people. Do not worry if... That's not in the ad. (laughs) I was going to say. Do not worry if you're not a pro in the kitchen. HelloFresh's 
foolproof recipes arrive pre-portioned and easy to prepare in just a few steps. The HelloFresh app makes it so easy to change your delivery day, food preferences, and plan size, or skip a week whenever you need. We love HelloFresh. Saving time is key, and the recipes are not hard to follow, and most of their meals are quick, so we can get dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Go to HelloFresh.com slash NateLand50 and use code NateLand50 for 50% off plus free shipping. That's 50% off plus free shipping at HelloFresh.com slash NateLand50 and use code NateLand50, America's number one meal kit. Uh, Julian Turnswitch, Turnwitch, wished... Julian Turnwich. This seems like two names that don't go together. Uh, I bet that I feel like they married into that name. Yeah, yeah. You think? Well, I don't know. Julian is. is a... But Turnwich seems. I bet they married into that. <laughs> What's your logic there? That only men have weird last names. No, I don't know if this no, is no, a men they don't or, go together. They don't go together. Oh, okay. So you would never name your kid Julian if you knew the last name was going to be turned. I got you. Yeah. Sorry, Julian. But it'd be, yeah, I don't know if Julian's a, a man or a woman. Probably a man, right? I guess. Mm-hmm. I think so. Yeah. So, uh, oh, N. so he N. married into that name? Yeah. That's yeah. what I was like. I don't understand. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Oh, boy. I think that's his, I think that's his last name. Probably the youngest then. Run out of names. The youngest child <laughs> yeah. where it's yeah. like fun. Uh-huh. Like they got tired of being, you know, the the great, uh, you yeah. know, all this kind of senior and all this stuff, mm-hmm. and then they just parents got a little had one wild year. Yeah. Took a turn, which there. Yeah, we got one kid. We can just <laughs> yeah, Julian. And then if you met him, you'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get like it. yeah, Makes you sense. go, yeah, dude, yeah. Julian Turnwich would be like Turnwich is like a very royal name. Like this guy's doing really good. Yeah, and Julian's the one that's in the news. All the time of that family, yeah. Where you're like, oh, they go, guess who showed up to the bar last? Like, I bet I can guess. Julian. All right, and Nate in Australia, we don't tip. However, however, there really isn't anything like bottomless cokes available. You have to pay for each one, and I also don't think I've seen Diet Pepsi in many years. McDonald's is referred to as Macca's here, and in my humble opinion, after sampling the product both here in the U.S. Nate will be pleasantly surprised as ours is better. Well, I mean, I can't wait to try it. And uh, I don't, man, bottomless Cokes, that is, that's going to be tough. I ain't afraid to go back and get another one. And yeah, but it's good. And I'm, I'm good that I can go wrap my head around it. And you I'll save go, money by not tipping. Yeah. 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 That's, uh, I like tipping. I'm, that's the that would be the hard part. You're gonna bring it, but if but yeah. I mean if you if they don't tip, then you're like yeah, I don't want to be weird. I mean I I tipped once in our in uh, Dublin, yeah, and it's like uncomfortable. Like it was like I tried to I waited to give the guy money for like a beer, and he's like what? Like he's busy and like he had to come. Not that he doesn't want the money, but it's just yeah. being like what? You know, here's uh, two dollars, oh, and it's that's like so weird. He he's like uh, all right. But I think now a lot of places have things for tipping still. Some, I think they know, like, look, if America's coming. Yeah, we're going to say yeah, turn yeah, down yeah. money. Yeah, Come yeah. On. Come but on. Uh, I remember yeah. you could bargain there, too. Like, if you're in a store, and how much? And then you said, well, I'll give you this. And sometimes they would do it. Really? Or, or they'd meet you in the middle. Wow. <clears throat> in Australia, the country? <laughs> yeah, it's a real country, man. Yeah, yeah. You've been there, right? Yeah. It's about going to Target, and you're just over there like, I ain't paying mm. full price for this. You were a company. Can man. you do $20? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is like one of those walkthrough, I don't know. A flea what, market? It wasn't a Target. Well, <laughs> closer to, the flea, to a flea market than Target. I remember okay. somebody bought a didgeridoo or something. Or oh, yeah. Uber oh, yeah. Ring. So you're in the market, not just yeah, in yeah. Australia. You're not in like living a life. Dude. Oh, I was in yeah. Australia. But, I know, but, but he's I mean, doing like a tourist. It's a garage sale. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I feel like you're making it sound like anywhere I go, I'm going to bargain. Like, you know, I got to go fill up a tank of gas. I'm going to be like, well, I don't know if I'm buying that full price. It's petrol. It's, yeah. I'll take it. I go. I get about a three twenty five for a gallon of that petrol <laughs> over there, here in Melbourne. And he goes, oh, 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 three twenty five. Did you pick that up to 
to see if that's true. What? If you can bargain stuff over there. Okay. I think you, you can bargain stuff here at a flea market. Like, yeah. so, like you went to like a fair flea market yeah. kind of thing. Maybe I was. Yeah. And you took it as like, oh, this is a country of m- people that haggle. Like, haggle. Yeah. I had a you guy try to do that. You think I... Australia is a bunch of hagglers. <laughs> I had a guy try to do that to me at Office Depot one time. Really? He was like, I'll give you this. I was like, "Ah, this is a corporation here. I just work here, dude. I don't make prices. (laughs) Yes, a little. Oh, he tried to haggle with you? Yeah. Yeah. Typically, (laughs) Aussies. Aussies? Aussies. 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 Don't they say Aussies? Typical. Typically, people from Australia only bargain when they're making a big purchase, like a car or a house. According to Finder, a quarter of people from Australia said they were uncomfortable negotiating a price, but it's easier than you think. In fact, many Aussie Aussie businesses are open to polite bargaining, helping you save some extra bucks or bring a product down to a price closer to what it's worth. How about that, Brian? You're right. Hmm. Shocking. (laughs) <laughs> I don't I don't I don't know. Cuz that's like a mattress or something like you can do that here at yeah. like uh mattress stores or you know be like I don't know cuz right, I'll give it like the guy that owns the store like it's a very like a private business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, you can go to any antique shop and if it's a private business, yeah. yeah. Anybody can negotiate. I negotiated a piece of stained glass at a place. Yeah. One time. Felt pretty good. Mm-hmm. Men are more likely to haggle than women. Really? In Australia? I think, yes, yeah, this is just Australia, but I think that's probably worldwide. I don't know. I would think women would do it more. I, I mean, I think now the women of now would do it more than the men of now. <laughs> I think it's flipped. That's probably I true. I think the men of now wouldn't do it. Yeah. The old man of the, the old men, that's, it was all about that. But now, you know, they're, it's coupons. It's their, their whole, you know, Laura's like, it's everything. Everything we buy is like, it's a, you know, you got to get this off and that. It's like a game. So. This one says, I'm on a Reddit, us. a Reddit thread now. It says, uh, haggle, and like used items. There'd be a little bit of haggling, but it's not, you can't like go to a regular store and, and haggle. This was so there you go. 1975. So. <laughs> and that's it say five years yeah, ago. Bates so took a boat over time. there. <laughs> <laughs> it was a year-long trip. He only spent two weeks there. <laughs> then I turned around. He turned around. He got off. <laughs> I go said, I, I dare, how dare you think I'll pay full price for that? And then he got back on the boat. I'm and going home. Back. I did a cruise to Cozumel, and on the cruise, they told us that people on the island like to haggle. And we went to the first store, and I did it with a guy, and he seemed so annoyed. He did it, but he seemed so annoyed. I'm like, I don't Mm. think anyone likes haggling. They made it seem like the people just really get into it. They have such a fun time with it. Yeah, (laughs) I don't think anyone likes it. I I bet there can be annoyed. I, I don't like doing it. It's like, yeah, it's, yeah, I think people, the people that do haggle, don't haggle. Like, I think they like the, there's probably an art to it. There's like some, it's fun. I, I just want to pay in like the least, you know, just get out. And if I'm going to haggle, it's going to be like, yo, dude, someone's like, oh, 30 bucks for this. And you go, I don't even have, I have $20. And then they're going to be like, I'll take the 20. And that, that would be the haggling. Uh, Otherwise, I don't want to sit and be like, dude, I'm not paying, you know. But I think, I mean, people enjoy it. Yeah. People like going to garage shells and like. I think the person is it that saving. Gary Vee? Doesn't Gary Vee go to. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. he loves it. The person saving the money likes it, but the person selling hates it, I'm sure. Probably start high. Yeah, they start. Uh, I mean, some, I would say like antique people that sell stuff. I think they like it because it's always, it's like, what would you sell this for? And you're like, I, I mean. I don't even know. Like, you know, but if the ones that know, like, all right, here's what I'm comfortable. You just got to go, here's the price that I'm, like, not annoyed with. I don't want to think about it. So I don't even really care what happens to it. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to, I would think you don't want to think about it. Like, you don't want to, you know, be like, I can't believe I gave that guy that for this. You want to, you want to go, like, I want to forget this. So give me a price that makes me forget it. And then, you know, it's not like it has to be anything crazy. If you're like 50 bucks and it's something that you're like, okay, here, mm-hmm. I'll give it to you, you know? Yeah. 
All right. right, Continuing our talk this week, we're talking about Australia. Mm. All right. You're currently in Australia. You're there right now. How's it going there? Uh, it's good. I tell you, this haggling thing has <laughs> got off to a bad start. <laughs> they haggle everywhere. Mm. They haggle you. So Australia is both a country and a continent. Mm. Mm. Only place in the world like that. Aaron, I thought you'd at least be interested. Yeah, that's it's all right. It's good for them, man. <laughs> How big is Australia? Pretty big. Roughly the size of the United States. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. I think I've pointed that out before on this podcast. Yeah. 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 you've asked that question yeah. before yeah. 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 over this <laughs> I'm Bonnie Bates over here uh, <clears throat> yeah that's uh, cause it's like we're having to fly a lot like cause you think it is you think like you're going to Australia and you're like oh so we're just driving between you're like dude you're going from like California to New York like there's oh, yeah. no yeah you don't think about it being that big yeah cause but, it's just all the way it's on the underside of the globe so when you look, when you spin a globe, you're never. You is know. there a lot of desert in the middle, though? Oh yeah, a lot. A lot Majority of it's of it. uninhabitable. Ninety percent of Australians live on the coast. Mm. The east. So coast. what's going on in the middle? Mm. Outback, well, Antarctic situation. But there are people that live there, tribesmen. Some research, government stuff going on there, probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They won't let you fly over it. Yeah. I you got to fly around Australia. It's <laughs> annoying. <laughs> There we go. Know. That sky looks like a normal sky to me, unless you know, something's going on. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just a lot of this right here, dude. Just open. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, the bush. Yeah, the bush. Finding great talent doesn't have to be a second job. You can hire faster and better with Indeed. You just need to breathe, take it easy. Mm-hmm. Keep it simple. If you're hiring, you need Indeed. Here's why. I'm going to give you three reasons. Rattle them off fast. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. (laughs) Find top talent with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. Two. Hate waiting. Indeed's U.S. data shows over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates the moment they sponsor a job. Three. Those are three Boom. great reasons. Right Rattle there. them off. And I've said one of the main things I love about Indeed is everything happens in one place. Dusty was making fun of the amount of tabs I had open on my computer earlier. With Indeed, you can manage everything all through one platform. You can get the interviews done through there. You can collect the resumes. You can hire people, communicate with them That's all through Indeed. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash Nate. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash Nate. Indeed.com slash Nate. Terms and conditions apply, of course. Need to hire. Indeed. Indeed. You need Indeed. Uh, 1770. So not, you know, not that long ago. <laughs> it's a new country. British explorer James Cook uh, landed there, mapped it out, and claimed it for Great Britain. And then in 1788, they started sending over prisoners. The first penal colony. It is crazy to just claim it. I know. <laughs> you would think, about it. all right, this is ours. And we other people it. had been Millions there. Millions of people living there. Yeah. <laughs> they said, I think the Dutch had already been there, but nobody thought to claim it. <laughs> it was yeah. busy. And what do you got to do? Write it down when you claim it. Do you write it down? I stick a flag in it. I stick a yeah. flag in the ground. You go, this is ours, and we'll kill anybody that says otherwise. Yeah, that's, uh, that's you good. have to be, you got to have the army, I think. Uh-huh. Yeah. Anybody could have probably claimed something, but you got to be, you want to fight it out. Uh, but this is 1770s. I mean, what, and then so they'd send prisoners over there. Yeah, so How I didn't know this. journey's that? Um, that's a very long journey. So they used to send, you said this before, I didn't know this. They used to send them to Georgia. I was about to call them out mm. on that. Georgia? Right? Yeah. Georgia, Georgia South, was a penal colony. Georgia and South Carolina. Mm. And then... Australia, Georgia. Wow. And then... I wasn't sure what Georgia we were talking about. It. <laughs> yeah. I don't really. think I still know. <laughs> Where Albany is. Yeah. yeah. Now, nope, our Georgia. And then... Our Georgia? Is yeah. that what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think... I was I was going along thinking it was... The the other, that's what I was thinking no. at first. Yeah. Like Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. Georgia and South Carolina... And then the Revolutionary War happened, so they needed somewhere new to send their the prisoners because they couldn't send them here anymore. Couldn't so just put them in a jail. <laughs> <laughs> had too many, I guess. So then they started shipping them to Australia, and when they let them just roam free, 
Yeah, I mean, basically, but it was such a barren land, such a tough to live there. Like, you can come here and start learning how to grow crops and stuff like that and try to survive, but you're free here. But it was very tough. They sent people to try to teach them, but most of them died early on. They would send it to Atlanta? I don't remember ever talking about that. I don't know about Atlanta, but Georgia, I read. Yeah. They would send. Yeah, that I just meant that Georgia, the one with Atlanta. Yeah. They would just go and just drop them off. And it was after... When was this? It was after, well, before seventeen before the Revolutionary yes. War. Yeah. yeah, then so, we were like, "That's enough." Yeah, because then we were our own. People. We're our own country now. You can't just yeah. drop off your worst yeah, yeah. people. You know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then eventually, the West, the most well-behaved convicts became the police force in Australia. <laughs> that's, that's nice. It all yeah. kind of worked itself out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Australia is often called Oz. I mean, would you rather have that though? Like, you know, like you're going to go to prison. You're like, all right, well, you're not going to be locked up, but we're going to send you to this land where. Yeah, that's what I would, I would prefer that. Well, I don't know. I mean, you can go just do your own thing. You'll be free, but it's like a crazy yeah. land. Yeah. But I'm saying that's the, you can stay here, be in prison, but you'll live. We'll feed you mm-hmm. or you go there. You're free, but you may not survive. I'd take freedom. I think I yeah. would too, but. That's why maybe not everybody wanted it. What um, what kind of crimes would you have to do to get sent there? I don't know. I think you were sentenced there for four years. And then you and either... they would come pick you up and you'd be like, oh, I was waiting for you at the beach. Yeah, or you could stay there. Some people chose to stay there. I think if you survived for four years. You're there. Yeah. You probably have a family. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that could be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you're just kicking and partying. <laughs> you hear a boat like a cruise boat pull, mur, mur, and he's like, "What's that?" You go, "You're going. You're good, dude. You're going back." <laughs> you're like, "Oh, this is a I'm having a pretty yeah, good I'm time over here." Great time here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bet there was a lot of that. I think so. And then tell him like, I died. Tell yeah, him I died. I bet there was. <laughs> yeah. There's uh there there probably had to be like yeah, but your family's like waiting for you. You go. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm staying. Yeah. Goes, Come on. <laughs> Tell me you couldn't find me. They go, all right. <laughs> and then they, they go, we couldn't find him. And then they, your family cries and you're over there just like <laughs> yeah. partying. <laughs> and no one knows because it's like, what are they going to do? Take a seven month boat? <laughs> Is that what it was? I mean, like, you had it back then. They talk people back in the old days, they talk about like everybody just whipped across. <laughs> yeah. It was months. Everywhere. Yeah. I know, but yeah. you're like, they're like, this guy traveled here, then here, then here. And you're like, I mean, didn't that take 30 years of his life? Just the, just the travel yeah, just was like there. that. You, you got to stay. And when you're there, you're like, you got to stay there for a while. Yeah. Just you and a compass out there. And you're just yeah. like, where, where are we? <laughs> compass. You yeah. talked about that before. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the biggest city in Australia is Brisbane. Mm-mm. I'm going there. Okay. Capital of Australia, anybody know? Um, Sydney? It's a good guess. No, Cabrera. No. Miguel Cabrera. Melbourne. Uh, Canberra. Okay. There you go. It's close. That's what I meant. I know one city. Did you know that? Something, yeah. I knew it was something like that. Um, I didn't know exactly how to say it. But I knew it was one it shouldn't be. You know what I mean? It's not it's like the, the one yeah. you think of. Well, yeah. most capitals are kind of like that, right? Mm-hmm. They're, they're like well, Albany, New York. Yeah, well, that's a good example of the op- the exception to the rule. What do you mean? Most places, what you think of as the capital. Oh, oh I don't know. I, I feel like if I, someone says, what's the capital, I assume it's going to be something I don't know. Really? Yeah. No. Isn't Athens, Georgia? Is Athens? It's Atlanta. Is Atlanta the capital? Mm-hmm. I don't know right? about that. But I think so, but... Uh... I doubt it. <laughs> I don't believe that. I would say at least half the states, the largest city is not the capital. Wouldn't you? I'm not even talking necessarily about the size of the city. I'm just thinking. But I think that's like what you usually the think The one of. you think of. Like in Alabama, you would think Birmingham to me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know it's Montgomery, but I think you would think Birmingham. California, okay. I would think Los Angeles. It says that's what the Georgia state capital is. So that's, where is it it's at? It's in Atlanta. I know, but that's just scroll down. That's just, I still would like to see. <laughs> Location, Atlanta, Georgia. 
Yeah, but that's just where the building's at. What's <laughs> the... Think... <laughs> yeah. Well, you think the capital's in Savannah, but the, I the capital say... building's in Atlanta? Maybe. I'm sure they have one in Atlanta, because they were like, obviously, can we do it here? <laughs> what is the capital of Georgia? I, I just wanted to say that. Why well, would not say that? You give me some... Uh, I don't think Aaron wants you to know. I don't want to know about the Georgia State Capitol. I don't. The building of that means nothing to me. The building where the Capitol is means nothing to I you. I want to know. Let's go to Atlanta's Wikipedia page. You see, right you here. Google stuff in such a what do you mean? mainstream media way. Googling. That's how he it's does. What are you talking about? He, he does it. What is he the capital? He never of gives you the real thing. It's <laughs> yeah. all just like well, hold on. Atlanta yeah. State Capitol. Uh, yeah, but is. What is like Atlanta is the capital and most populous city of the U.S. state of Georgia. I mean, it doesn't get more <laughs> well, direct than that. Well, that's what I wanted to see. <laughs> that's what I. That's what I wanted to see. Yeah, okay. I mean you know? that is a, that that's is fair enough. Definitive. Fair enough. I wanted to see the it written in a sentence like that. Yeah, I wanted that to be said to me. Yeah, okay. yeah. Don't be vague about it. No, no. <laughs> you just tell me like yeah. there's a painting of a capital in Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I. I I mean, I'm with it. Yeah. Canberra is a Aboriginal word that means women's cleavage because it's between two mountains. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Australians get it. So mm -hmm. Throw that out, Nate. Australia has six states oh. and two territories. So they're pretty big. So the territories contain the states? Uh, No. So what what differentiates yeah. a territory and a state? That's I don't know how any of that stuff works in other countries, man. I, I think it's Queens, something Queensland. That's one of them. Queensland, New South Wales. I used to write the blog for an Australian laundry company. My old job. <laughs> that was one of my old jobs. <laughs> I ran the blog of an Australian. This was an Indeed job? No, this was after college. This is a marketing company I used to work at. Yeah. So they had places. I remember they had places in uh, New South Wales and Queensland, and I wrote their blog. <laughs> wow. Laundry company. They hired out Australian <laughs> Uniform Service. Is that what Australia does? Is their country when they go to other? They hire. Were there India? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Essentially, <laughs> just you know, I need a southern, but I need a little bit of education out of them, mm -hmm. and then you're like, I mean, you're the guy. But I had to go through, and you have to spell all the words like you're Australian and stuff. Yeah. I could have done, you can do my entire job with AI in 10 seconds now. Oh, so yeah. that's a job that I, I would have just, yeah, played. Done it with AI. Oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. So what, like, so these territories are very small. Jervis Bay and Australian capital. Well, uh, that makes it look like there's three, because Northern Territory is also up there. Um, yeah, well, someone's wrong, and <laughs> we don't know who. What's wrong about this one? Well, because I said there's two territories, and that makes it look like there's three. Jervis Bay, I did not have. Uh, but oh, boy. Get it together, Brian. I know. Anyway, there's six states. Christmas Island probably seems pretty fun. Yeah. Christmas Island? Yeah. Or the Cocos Island, too. Yeah. I bet that's fun. I think Christmas would be. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. You go to Coco, I'll go to Christmas. I don't, I don't <laughs> You'll think. see you as a better time. Yeah. The uh, Great Barrier. Barrier. I think you're, you're definitely going to Jervis Bay territory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not Christmas Island. Yeah. Though. The uh, Great Barrier Reef is the largest ecosystem in the world. Largest coral reef system in the world. Economical system. <laughs> it's oh, like in Christmas yeah. Island. Just an article, The Grim History of Christmas Why Island. Why quarantine on its palm fringe <laughs> beaches might not bring cheer to Australians fleeing coronavirus. Yeah, I mean, this looks like a nightmare. Dude. That's the dude. They're they're. I bet it's great, and they're 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 yeah, yeah. They're, they're doing this to make you not go. They're hiding. Well, it's working. I'm not yeah. going. Christmas like ice crabs. I was yeah, go. that's crazy. Well, go to the Wikipedia yeah. of Christmas Island. Yeah, that looks fun. Yeah, I'm sure it does look fun. It's a ter it's a territory uh, again. It's a territory. They're all territories. They're all territories. Uh, it's a, an external territory. 1,600 people there. I mean, you got plenty oh, of space. Oh, that's great. Get yeah. spread out. Oh, yeah. It's mostly Chinese people there, it looks like. We have a fun flag. That is fun. Yeah, that is. That's a good one. So is that a Chinese territory? Uh, I don't know. Territory yeah. of, of... Australian no, a, Indian Ocean Territory. External Territory of Australia. 
I mean, what, what's the point? What are we even talking about? What are <laughs> like, <laughs> what? We're trying to get to the bottom of Christmas Island. What are, you know? but what do you say if you're from the, you know, what are y'all? You're like, well, we're uh, Australia, but we're this. like, that's the hard. Chinese Australians. It's hard to understand. And I know, uh, I would think people, you're just going to know where you're from. Mm hmm. But it's hard to be like, you want to go like, all right, but I'm driving to Kansas. What's that? What do you say that's that in Australia? You know, like, they, like if I'm going to California from Tennessee, like, what what do you say? Like, California is California. It's a state. Mm -hmm. It's 50, you know. There, it's like, you go, I'm flying to Queensland, and then you're going to a territory. Like, you, like it would seem crazy to be in 2023, someone going, I'm going to a territory. You'd be like, what? I think it's like yeah. Canada. Here it would be. Like Canada is so big, but yeah. everybody lives on the border. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, pretty much everybody lives in three or four cities there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Christmas Island was invaded by the Japanese in 1941. Mm. So the Japanese were doing a lot of invading back in the day. Oh, yeah. They it's had a the, good uh, run of things. Yeah. Yeah. The Southeast Asian For a theater. small country, they were really crushing it. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean, though? It's just a small, you would think they would yeah, just respect, be able to, dude. you know what I mean? They got a lot done. I think about that Norm Macdonald joke about Germany. Oh, yeah. Oh, so funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the world's longest golf course is in Australia. Mm. 850 miles long. Wow. 850 wow. miles long? Yeah, it's basically set up so you tour the coast and see it, and you play a hole, then you travel somewhere, play another hole. Oh, wow. So it's like a, a tourist thing. That's fun. Yeah, just to see the, see the, Imagine there's a weight on the next hole. You're like, oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Took me three days yeah. to get here. You should do it and, uh, you know, take a week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I bet it's uh, par five. Uh, it is pretty awesome. And you just do it and just do the tour. What a great idea. And you get a par three, you, go, you drive. I mean, can you imagine just driving for a half a day? And you're like, what's next? You're like, 150 yard par three. You're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> You got to be a good hole. <laughs> you go. You and know, they're still waiting on me. You got to sit on that double bogey for six hours. You just waiting to get to the next hole. Get out every hole. You're like, you got a range here. <laughs> you can. You can. Uh, I don't know a lot of the you terminology. Can rent clubs at each hole for a fee, and you can play the course at, from either direction. What about golfing on Christmas Island? That seems like a golf place. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I feel like they, you know, if Japan was still there, it might be. <laughs> yeah. They golf. Um, so Australian Prime Minister Harold Holt went surfing near, in, near Melbourne in 1967 and was never seen again. Hmm. He was presumed drowned after many days, but his body was never recovered. So there's been many conspiracy theories about what may have happened to him. The a Chinese submarine grabbed him. He faked his own death. Sounds no one, like an Australian JFK to me. Mm. <laughs> but think about how, to, that's, it's even crazy. Think about the leader of your country, not only just drowned, but they never find his body. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how crazy is that? Uh -huh. Very. Because conspiracy theories would never end like what happened. Oh, yeah. And they it. shouldn't. Let's find that body. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, where's he surfing alone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, no he, was with, he was with friends, but he was out there. Uh, but yeah, he didn't have any... How old was friends. he? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he was surfing with buddies. Right. They don't uh, have, like, uh, a boat not, out there? This is 1967 in Australia, so I guess it was a little bit looser. This is pre-boats. Still, they were still basically prisoners at that time. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they go. This was the most well-read prisoner. So he goes, "I'll just run for this thing." <laughs> but to have your president missing, <laughs> it's crazy, man. and then never be found, and you finally just have to say, "We got to presume he's dead and move on and make someone else." You think, the leader. like you know, we landed on the moon two years later. So you think Australia really felt like just defeated to be like, <laughs> we can't even find our <laughs> president. <laughs> you guys, and America's on the moon, dude. Yeah, meanwhile, goes, in America, we gotta making, get it together. We got dude. lost at the beach. <laughs> he goes, Are you kidding me? They're he making goes, phone calls. They're, to they're the sea of tranquility. Yeah. You can watch 
There was, there's a, they got a guy on the moon right now. Look at the moon. There's a guy on it. Look at that. And where's our leader at? We don't know. He went surfing like a teenager. <laughs> and we lost him. Who took over? Um, oh, I don't know. I, I guess his, uh, his number two, whoever yeah, that is. Queen of England. <laughs> or, so. Yeah. Uh, uh, or what's the... <laughs> God, I can't think of the name. Uh, what's the... Uh, Elsa. Uh, no, not Elsa. Uh, <laughs> Ursula. Oh. Ursula took over. <laughs> like from Little Mermaid. <laughs> Is that the lady with the yeah. pitchfork? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's who took over. It's Ursula. <laughs> yeah. She's been running for a while. They knew she can't, she can breathe underwater. So that's what she ran on. She took, she, she killed yeah. the president. She ran on that. She goes, I'll never drown. I'll never drown. And people go, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Electric e bikes. Eclectic e bikes. <laughs> Eclectic e bikes. Summer is in full swing. Which means there's no better time to get on explore. We have a uh, electric e bike, uh, electric e bike. They're awesome. They're so fun to ride. Uh, me and Harper went. She's we we're riding the other day, and uh, we rode around. And I like it because you can go be nice and lazy and just press a little oh, thing yeah. on it. Oh, yeah. It's like riding a little motorcycle. You're, you know, it's 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 fun to go do, and it's it's. I mean, I, I really am a big fan of them. Plug it in. It's super easy to go ride around. I mean, get around the neighborhood. Like, we just you pop around the neighborhood pretty easily. Uh, they have uh, quality feature-filled models and finance as low as $73 per month. Uh, they have a powerful removable battery, a bright LCD display. And they have, now they have, like, stuff on the, like, the little thing on the back. You can, you could, like, tie stuff down mm -hmm. to the back. I and mean, if you live in a city like New York, this is like how you're going to oh, get around. Dude, I think sure. like that's it's going to be the way to go. And so for us to live in neighborhoods and you still have a lot of cars, it's it's very fun to go ride around it. There's over 250,000 riders on the road so far. Roam freely and reach up to 28 miles per hour with the twist of a throttle. Our next level pedal assist, which I started doing that. So you pedal, that's the way to do and it, it kind of just shoots off. But there you get yeah. a little, you get a little movement. You know, still working, still working, but, but, you, really but you're pushing. going, yeah, you're yeah. pushing. You could get pretty far, pretty quick, which mm -hmm. is all, which is awesome. Uh, rediscover your independence this summer with the XP 3.0 from electric. Visit electric ebikes.com to learn more and explore the epic models electric has to offer. That's L E C T R I C ebikes.com. Calm. Uh, over eighty percent of the mammals and reptiles in Australia are found nowhere else on Earth. Yeah, we're, I'm pretty pumped about that. That'll be cool. Yeah. You gonna, do you have any ex excursions planned? To uh, see animals. Laura's been planning it. Go hug like, a koala bear. Yeah, we're gonna try to do that. We're gonna go to the the Irwin Zoo. Oh, that's cool. Uh, but uh, I want to get out there and like try to do an uh, outback safari. And, oh, nice. Yeah, dude. like actually, you know, get out and see, see some, some kangaroos. Stuff. One of the zoos mm -hmm. you're going to, a uh, lion just escaped from there. So Ooh. be careful. Oh, Maybe we'll time. be back in. Maybe. Yeah, dude, that's crazy. I'll be in Australia when this comes out. Yeah. That's so far away. Yeah. <sighs> Any idea if people in Australia are offended by the movie Crocodile Dundee? That was one of my favorite movies. Me too. I don't know. I mean, uh, Paul Hogan is so great. He he's was. Australian. I think people, I bet he's beloved. I would think it's beloved. Like it wasn't because it was a good movie. Yeah. And it was, you know, so. Two, great two movies, honestly. Crocodile yeah. Dundee 2 is not bad. It's all right. It's not as good. And then the third yeah. one, I don't even think I saw. No, nah, I never saw that. Yeah, I didn't even know there was a third. Hung it up. That's where he was in LA. Yeah. But yeah, hung it up. He go. He watched the first two. The second one's all right. Third one, I was like, yeah. And Lightning Jack, you ever watch that one? Yeah, I saw that's that. a good one too. Yeah, to me, Paul is he Hogan, still alive? Uh huh. He was to me the only Australian I knew of for a long time. Yeah, so. yeah it is crazy. Yeah, I mean that would be me too. And then it was Steve Irwin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Crockett. I mean, Paul Hogan. Like I saw some movie where he was like an angel too. That was pretty oh good. yeah. I he watched. Was, he had a run there for he a while. Might have been. Uh, he was R. John Wayne. To them, you know, yeah. Crocodile Dundee is still the highest grossing Australian film of all time. Wow! So they loved it. Mm. Yeah, but that's saying that could be counting over here. 
No, this is just Australian. Oh, oh, wow. This is the uh, the, the theaters in Australia by box office sales. Oh, wow. It's that high. Yeah. Of Australian films. Yeah. So, 1986, 40.8 million Australian dollars, which was so much bigger than anything. I mean, the year before yeah. that, Beverly Hills Cop was number one at 4 million. Mm-hmm. So Crocodile Dundee was ten times more popular than the biggest movie. Of yeah, the I mean it was year. bigger than Jurassic Park. Yeah, like go keep going down. Like it's uh, is it what Titanic it took the beat Titanic it. to beat it? That was it. Yeah, Titanic, and, and then it took Shrek two, obviously. <laughs> uh, the, the Dark Knight, Avatar was a norm. I mean, look, yeah. things have changed in the last few years, but but it's still, yeah. it's still way up there, man. Absolutely. It took the Titanic. I mean, it held the rain for a long yeah. time. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's when they said. Yeah, it I had think. the record until Titanic in 98, and then that had the record until 2009 with Avatar. Huh. Crazy. But it was an Australian movie. Yeah. So, And that's number one. Anyway. Maybe that's when Titanic came. They go, we got to change the look around here they go, yeah. he goes what do you mean he goes crocodile and these are still most successful movie he goes <laughs> he goes i think we should all go watch this titanic and they agreed as a country does paul hogan live in australia now you think oh, let's look i would up. think so i would go there but that's almost like our version of dukes of hazard he's from australia i don't think so over play uh dramatized uh, I, I dramatize not the right word, but the stereotypes about yeah of, of a guy who doesn't know how to a bathroom works and the good know, old America. boy of you know he's yeah. just a good old boy never did any harm yeah, he's Australian he lives there eighty three years old wow mm-hmm. eighty three he's about to be crocodile done you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> if you're All listening right. that was Aaron yeah yeah. yeah. So most of the most popular animals in uh, Australia. He's been married a few times. <laughs> yeah, uh, he, like so I like to see there. I think that Linda is, was the actress, right? Yeah, he married that woman for a while. Yeah, Linda, long like, time. Kozlowski. Like they yeah. go through like some of these dudes. You like they just go through some marriages. Man. Oh yeah, yeah. Six kids. Yeah, because you got to think like you marry Crocodile Dundee when Crocodile Dee's coming out. He's on top of the world. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then. It don't get no better than that. It never gets better than that. I mean, the movie ends with him walking on people's heads through a subway. Yeah. It yeah. never gets better than that. I mean, he had some other successes, but it never gets better than yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, most of the most popular animals in Australia are marsupials. Mm. Anybody know what a marsupial is? Like a, a duck bill uh, platypus. Pouch. Is it like where he put his car <laughs> in a marsh? Yeah. <laughs> Jumped up for the marsupial. Yeah, it's a pouch. Kangaroos, wombats. Oh. Koalas, Tasmanian devils, possums. Well, here, yeah, that's one of the few marsupials we have. Is that mm-hmm. our koala bear? <laughs> yeah, it, it might be. Mm-hmm. They're a lot less cute. Lives in a tree. Yeah, koalas seldom, if ever, drink their entire life. Water, water, yeah, or anything. <laughs> really? I mean, yeah, I mean, alcohol. <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, yeah. Well, keep, there was an alcohol they're treatment. Very they're religious. Pretty chill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very religious. <laughs> There used to be an alcohol treatment place here in Nashville, and their ad was like, I think it was called the Koala Center, because because they never drink. And why do we name the baby changing stations after them? Because they care about Cuddle. their baby so much. Yeah. yeah, they're in the pouch. You just kind of associate. I think they're koala called bear. Koala Care. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But why why would you name that after a koala bear? Well, because that, you know, that plastic thing's a... Reminds me of a warm pouch. <laughs> but then you put your baby, your sweet baby. Yeah, where where everybody else has put their baby. Yeah. Yeah, Just that's the, a good point. A, I mean, Tasmanian Devils, I think of Bugs Bunny cartoon. <laughs> Does anybody yeah. remember that? Yeah. Oh, oh, sure. yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. They're dying off because of devil facial tumor disease, which you do not want to look at. Oh, jeez. Oh, it's not good, but they're dying over there. Dingoes. Tasmanian devils are kind of fun looking. They look absolutely nothing like the cartoon. Yeah. They're getting the disease? Mm-hmm. What's it coming from? Uh, I forgot. Let's get Smoking. some of them over here. They drink. They do drink. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they make up yeah. for the quality. Yeah. 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 There's a, you know, the UFC fighter, Taz Mexican devil. I don't know. It's, it's the best nickname yeah. in sports. All right. <laughs> so. Um, it is good. There was a wrestler called Taz. Yep. Yeah. In 1980, <laughs> uh, nine-year-old, a nine-week-old baby girl 
disappeared while on a camping trip with her family. And the mom uh, exclaimed, a dingo's got my baby. Oh, yeah. And they could never find the baby. Uh, there was never any sign. So they end up charging the parents. I think the mom was charged with murder and the dad accessory, maybe. And then years later, they did find the child's jacket, and it was in a dingo den. So they went back to trial and found enough evidence to overturn the case. And now they do think that a dingo really did snatch her baby. Oh, man. How long did they stay in jail? Uh, let me look here. Yeah, I mean, Elaine says that, that dingo yeah. ate my baby. Yeah, I remember that. Like, that was a like a thing people were saying for the while. The well, there was a, there was a ate- movie about it. Meryl Streep played her mm-hmm. and said, the dingo ate my baby. Yeah. I remember just remember people saying that a lot. I yeah. feel like Jim Carrey said that somewhere. Maybe. I mean, that lady's alive. Yeah. She was convicted on in 1982, and she was released in 1986. Hmm. So, so yeah. four years. Yeah. Four years in the prison. Yeah, so, uh, Dingo takes your baby, and then you go to prison. Yeah, That's a tough run. And just a miracle that they find yeah. that jacket. Mm-hmm. Be careful around those dingoes. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, walk with someone, Nate, if you're out there, dingoes. Mm-hmm. Uh, platypus and... Or surfing. Echinadas, I don't even know how to say that, are the only two mammals in the world that lay eggs to give birth. Cool. A duckbill platypus is a weird animal. What was the animal that, that in Australia that died off and went extinct? The, the dodo, dodo bird. bird? Oh, yeah, the dodo. When did that go on extinct? I, I remember that bird a lot. Like, you probably grew up with it. I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. It was like that recently, wasn't it? I don't think so. 70s? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I thought the last one died in like the 85 or something. Yeah. I think it was when the bears won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the 85 bears. I remember reading the paper the next day. Chicago Bears won the Super Bowl. Oh, last Dodo died. <laughs> <laughs> got buried. Huh. It got buried the bears. on page eight. I just, oh. Okay, the last one. <laughs> the last one was cited in 1662. I'm sorry. I thought this yeah. was. I thought y'all like had. I thought y'all saw Dodo. Thought as I well. played with them. Yeah, I thought they were just around when yeah. you were growing up. Yeah. Now they're like a dumb <laughs> looking bird. In Australia. I yeah, thought there was a photo of one. I guess not. There's like a yeah. They're like a dumb looking bird. Yeah. And yeah. Just, they're real dumb. What was the last like? What animal went extinct? Like, what's the last one that has gone extinct? There was a type of bird that. Yeah. Uh, or like last common passenger animal. pigeon. The passenger pigeon is extinct. There was one that they said sounded, used to block sounded, out. The... You, sound, you slurred that yeah, one. The passenger, <laughs> passenger <laughs> pigeon. Best animal. Uh, the passenger pigeon is it so went ex- different that time. The passenger pigeon went extinct. The nineteen uh, hundreds. Uh, it went extinct. Nineteen fourteen. It didn't even survive the war. But the last animal to go extinct was the teeny poiali, a type of bird known as a honey creeper, discovered in 1973. A honey creeper. It huh? officially was declared extinct in 2021. Wow. But the wow. last universally accepted COVID. sighting was in 1987. Wow. Well, the Me Too movement. Uh, yeah. <laughs> creeper. <laughs> <laughs> You're done, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, 20 of the 25 most venomous snakes in the world are found in Australia, including yeah. the top 11. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's fun. Like, they, they have crazy brown snake. Brown snake is just in people's homes. And it's not even the top one. It's close. I sent you a list of the top 25, I yeah. think. Yeah. The brown snake was number one the at one inland- point. Uh, Taipan. Uh, Taipan. Taipan. Yeah, is the brown snake's two. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. The brown snake's not even, yeah. not even worth talking about. My mistake. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, inland so, Taipan. That's, and that's recent that they said that. So, those are just uh, in people's houses? I don't know if that's recent. Now, the, the brown snake, yeah, like people find them in their garages and stuff. Like they're, they like being in people's homes. So, if it bites you, are you dead or you got some time to get to the, Pretty close. I mean, yeah, you might have. I don't think anyone's died in since like the early '80s. Yeah, so you have time from I a guess. snake bite, or maybe it's spiders. I don't know because that's next. The two deadliest spiders in Australia. I thought they were dying every day over there from this. 
the way it's talked about. Maybe a spider second. The funnel web spider is the deadliest spider in the world, and the redback spider is the second. Both in Australia. But they said no one's died since like the early 80s because they have the anti venom. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good yeah. news. Watch out for spiders and snakes. Mm-hmm. Scorpions, too, I bet. Scorpions out there? I don't know. What you think is we're going to New Zealand, too, who has none of this. New Zealand has no snakes. Yeah. New Zealand looks really great. I mean, Australia does, too, but I've but a lot of homesteader people in New Zealand. Mm-hmm. So I've seen some. It just looks very green. It's homesteader people. You know, like they, you know, they. They just live off the land. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In 2006, Australian comedian Isaac Butterfield uh, put New Zealand for sale on eBay in a one-month auction. He started at one cent, and it got up to $3,000 before eBay took it down. Hmm. You guys know him? Uh, Never heard of him. Uh, uh, maybe I've seen his face. He's got like oh, he's got yeah, some, he's got two some million other stuff going on followers. Too. Uh, are you going to Tasmania? I don't know. Around half the world's opium for morphine and other mm. opiates is there. And the wallabies. Maybe that's what's happening. Yeah. Maybe before the flight back. <laughs> <laughs> the wallabies get in the opium poppy fields and they get high and then they trample the crops. They, they go that's around tough. in circles. Yeah. Who does that? Circles. The wallabies. It's a family. That, no, it's a type of animal. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a good shoe, too. The is wallaby it? shoe? You ever have a wallaby shoe? Mm-mm. Oh, I remember those. You've seen these? Remember these uh, guys? Yeah. Like uh, Walter White wears them a lot. Yeah. That was my school uniform shoe in high school. Yeah. And I like them. You write Walmart on it? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, yeah. Remember you have Walmart sandals? Oh, yeah, yeah. Not today. A couple of food things. Vegemite. It's created by yeast used to create beer. People use it as a condiment there. Put it on toast. And oh, I've heard about Vegemite. Things. As you might sandwich. And Australians put beetroot on their burgers. Love beets. Do you? Yeah. I just got into beets a couple of years ago. I love them. Golden beets. Had some last night uh, at the house. Yeah. Love beets. I'm growing some. Oh. Does, uh, does Daisy watch <laughs> Bluey? Yeah, a little bit. That's Australian. What is that? It's an animated. I don't. It's about. A, it's a dog, right? Yeah, dog family. It's it's pretty good. I try to get her to watch it because there's a story involved and it's pretty funny. It's something I can follow. I discourage <laughs> Coco Melon uh, very hard in my my household because there's nothing to it. It's just just oh, that's my dog just watches. noises. Yeah, just a garbage program. <laughs> that's his. That's, <laughs> that's my bro- daughter's favorite show. I know. Yeah. That's why it's so bad because it's like they shouldn't be that into it. All right. Moving on. You'll tell him that he's about to have girl. to watch a kid yeah. alone. Yeah. And this is one thing. Was, he's, all he had was cocoa milk. Yeah. Mr. Dusty says, we can't watch this. Yes. What's your favorite? JJ. I told Daisy now will say, no cocoa melon. She'll go. She wants to watch TV. She'll go, no cocoa melon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she'll throw her hands up. No cocoa melon. But she used to love it, right? Yeah. But you just I beat it out you. of her. You talked yeah. her out of it. Yeah. yeah. So 40% of. College football's starting punters are Australian. Wow. 40%? Wow. There's 53 Australian punters last year in Division One football. That's crazy, dude. There's Why? Com- well, there's a company. One, they've done rugby since birth. And then there's a company there called Pro Kick Australia. And every one of them go through this, this company and it helps them train to become punters in the U.S., and they talk about how it's really changed the game because now they're just all about the height. They don't even care about distance as much because they just want you to fair catch it. Oh, okay. It's, it's about a, hang time. About hang time, yeah. And Interesting. They're the best at it. Well, that's where punting could go out of the game. Like, if it's going to be just a fair catch every time, then why would you <clears> – who's going to – like, it makes it where you're like, well, then we need to just get rid of it. My guess is – they're going to get rid of special teams altogether mm-hmm. in American football. That'll be the first thing to go. Yeah. Kickoffs, kick returns. And how would they switch the field? You just get the ball to 20. Yeah. I think that's how they'll, that's going to be one of the first things they do to cut back on all the head injuries and stuff is get rid of special teams. That's yeah. What I, I, that's just my thought on what will happen. I'll have to figure out because that wouldn't be fair. Like if you pin somebody at the one, and instead of them punting, now you just get the ball down at the 
20. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, look, I don't know how they would do it, yeah. but I think they'd take it away because well, that's where most, that's where a lot of injuries come from. And it's, if you're going to remove one part of the game, that's the part you yeah, remove. Yeah, I agree. Especially kickoffs and kick returns. It's just now crazy. they're kicking it through the thing, too. What do you mean? They're just kicking it through the goalposts. Yeah. I mean, half of them. Yeah, like so crushing it. it. Yeah. Now you yeah. can fair catch a kickoff, right? And start yeah. at the. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But like, yeah, you just, everybody starts at the 20 and then you just get, you have to go for it on fourth down. Like, you know. But I bet you could be like, uh, Maybe just, yeah, just make it where there's no punts here. Like, you just got to go for it on fourth down. Yeah, or I, we can put the ball 45 yards away or mm -hmm. something. Yeah. And just don't have to actually punt it and return it. Yeah. But then, then I they, hope I'm wrong, but I think that's what will happen. I, I don't think I'm against it, but I would rather just be like, just you got to go for it. Everybody's got to go for oh, it. that'd be fun. Yeah, like, just do that. And if you're on the one, you're like. Unless you want to try a field goal. Yeah, unless you're going to try a field goal, yeah. So who do you guys think is the most famous person for Australia? Paul Hogan. Steve Irwin. Yeah. All time, Steve Irwin, I think. What about... Uh, to, Amer to America. Maybe it's different to the rest of the world. What about to uh, us. Wolverine? Is he Australian? Yep. Hugh, Hugh Jackman. Jackman. Hugh Jackman, yeah. Mm. Mel Gibson. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's a crazy one. Yeah. He's from Australia. Has he mm -hmm. got his Australian accent? No. I think he's just lived here so long. Yeah, he... Yeah. The, I think Mad Max, the first one, was filmed in Australia. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Nicole Kidman. Yeah. Yeah, she's got Keith be Urban. There, Keith right? Urban. He was born in New Zealand, but grew up in yeah. Australia. Russell Crowe, same thing. The Hemsworth family. The Hemsworth. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Kate Blanchett. Olivia Newton John. Look at that. Heath. Le oh, now you're looking. I was <laughs> trying to impress sorry. you guys. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are watching it. And I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. who else do you think? Margot Robbie. Wow. Big one. Um, Keith Urban. Yeah. Rick Springfield from my era. <laughs> Out of those, then who's Does the most know Rick famous? I know Rick Springfield. Heath Ledger. You never heard huge. of him? Yeah, I know. I know. Oh, okay. I, mean, I know he's he's dead now, but Iggy he's... Azalea. She really fell. Russell Crowe. That Iggy Azalea was like, didn't she like have some big yeah. songs for a second yeah. and then just boom? I'm so uh, fancy. Hannah Gadsby. Yeah, she's up there, man. Yeah. Jim Jeffries. And then some bands, um, ACDC. Oh, really? Oh. oh, Tony Collette. I thought they were red blooded Americans. I didn't know. Beat the BGs, Men at Work, In Excess, Little River Band, Air Supply. Yeah. Oh, so I mean, they got a lot music. of. Stuff I did not out know that about the BGs. Yeah. That's awesome. You think it's different now? You feel different about the BGs? I, I, no, I, I'm a big fan. Mm -hmm. I just watched the movie Saturday Night Fever with John Travolta. BG, big BG soundtrack. Yeah. It's so good. Mm hmm. So good. And I got a few things here on New Zealand before we wrap up. <laughs> yeah. Good. good. <laughs> so the word Kiwi refers to three different things in New Zealand. It's the flightless bird that lives there. It's a nickname for New Zealanders. They call themselves Kiwis. And then it's a fruit that also is there. You'll find it all over New Zealand. All right. So if I say kiwi, it's like it could be one of three. You got to use context. Yeah. You know, kiwi bird. But if you're calling somebody, you, you filthy kiwi. You know what I mean? Oh wait, what does that mean? Is the bad one? No, I think they call oh. themselves kiwis. I, oh. I was being, I was kidding. <laughs> oh, I hope, I hope. Yeah, I don't People think there's a negative connotation in Australia. Just call themselves kiwis. This is New Zealand. New Zealand. I oh, yeah. Sorry, I jumped. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. we're in a different place now. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why do they do that? And they're hairy, a hairy people, but sweet on the inside. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's it. Um, there's five sheep per every person in New Zealand. See that? Yeah. A lot of homestead, a lot of farming going on there. Yeah. Yeah. I love to watch videos of people in New Zealand. <laughs> farming and stuff. It's a lot of fun. Would you are like, you? Th they're completely off the grid or... I don't Somewhat. know if they're completely off the grid, but yeah, they, they'll have a lot of wood burning stoves that they're cooking out mm -hmm. of. And it'll just be like, you know, you'll think you're watching some family in East Tennessee, but they're really in New Zealand. You think you would move there? Like if it, say if, you know, at all, like America just falls apart, you got to go somewhere. Well, There's I think they're very, I think they have a lot of like very strong government control. Oh. Yeah. Where could you go that's, you know. I don't know. I've thought about it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't There's know. There's really nowhere to go, nah, right? I don't think so. Well, because it's like, then you got, our government would be, it'd be so corrupt that it's literally taken over by. Well, that's what I think. If America falls, then it's all over. 
for the whole yeah. world, and we're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, right. I do think mm. that, though. I mean, yeah, I don't yeah, mean yeah. to get all negative. We're done. Yeah. So, yeah. So why don't you eat bacon, dude? So let's get yeah. back. <laughs> now, now, now that, we, now that <laughs> yeah. we're into it. Yeah. <laughs> New Zealand, second highest sheep per person ratio in the world. Can you guess what number one is? Oh, Pennsylvania. I would have said first. <laughs> the Falkland Islands. Oh. 220 or tw- two, two, 200 sheep, sheep per, per, per person. Where's well, how that many at? people? 3,500 oh, people. Okay, that's, cheating. that's cheating. 3,500 people, 700,000 sheep. I want to get some sheep. Where's that at? Yeah. Falkland Islands is. What if you went over there and you're like, you know, I didn't see one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a, yeah. Bad, it's a bad tool. Yeah. I thought I'd see more sheep. Falkland Islands is uh, right off Argentina. Now, I, that sounds like a place I'd like. It's to live. like when you would go, yeah, I don't think I'm going to see one. And then they're, they're like, no, everywhere. you don't understand. They're yeah. everywhere. And you're like, I know, but like, I'm going to stay in the city. And you're like, you don't understand. They're. <laughs> Are birds or <laughs> sheep? They're like chickens in uh, uh, Tampa, or, or what? Oh was that yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Hawaii has a lot of chickens just walking around. Yeah, look at. I mean, look I at want some chickens islands. and sheep. That's what I want. These things get going. Uh, well, you know, a sheep is a. You don't really think of it being a wild animal. It's wild. Yeah, it's out there, dude. Look at these things. You ever seen they a sheep see. that never got? What's the word? Shown? Sheared. Sheared? Sheared, yeah. It's bad for them. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, but what? But, I mean, how's it bad for them if that's how they are? I think eventually they can't walk. It covers their face, so they couldn't even see. So they have to be sheared? I think so. I mean, how did the, they, you know. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, how did. Uh... The ability to shed naturally has been bred out of most breeds of sheep. Oh, making shearing an absolute necessity that's what everybody tells me everybody every time i go i'd like to get sheep everybody goes you gotta shear the sheep you gotta shear the sheep and i'm like yeah i want the wool shear yeah i want the wool oh you would use the wool yourself yeah coats and stuff i don't know i mean it seems like a pretty hard process but yeah that's what i'd love to have it's a bunch of wool wild sheep will naturally shed their winter coats they scratch their bodies against trees and stuff and it gets rid of it but one's bred domestically that just live on farms you have to shear them yeah but that, that's what i'm saying though it's not you know you it made it seem like wild sheep you know you're like if you're a sheep in the wild it's just you just wait. yeah unless... once your hair grows you're dead but they they're <laughs> yeah. getting it, they're getting they're getting it off yeah you're right so i just remember a photo i saw of one that hadn't been i guess it got lost or something and it was just crazy I mean, it's it's like hundreds of pounds of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would imagine it's a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's got to be a nightmare, but there has to be. You would way think to... even that sheep would. Oh, go. it's an Australian. Let me rub up against something. See if I can't get some of this hair off. Yeah, too. Yeah, he probably that couldn't see. Disgusting, dude. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> oh my it could God, be. Dude, that looks like a, just a rug wrapped around that's that some thing. D- that's some dreads going. Yeah, that is gross. That dude. thing's ready to go to a Rastafarian party. <laughs> that's what it looks like. Yeah. He's got to feel so good when that sheep gets a haircut. Oh, yeah. Imagine. Can you? I mean, I don't. I think that's a feeling that most people will never feel. It's almost <laughs> yeah. worth it to grow it out yeah. that much, just to be that feeling of the that, relief. All that coming. Have you off. see what's under that hat? I mean, yeah, yeah. I got. I need to get a haircut soon. But it's but the, yeah, the relief of just your whole body. You can't see. It's over your eyes. Yeah, it's over your eyes, and then and just the relief of it's gone. Just it's got to feel good. Um, what's the most famous movie shot in Australia? I mean, in New Zealand, Lord of the Rings franchise has to be by far. Yeah, they do thirty-three million dollars of revenue each year from tourism just from the Lord of the Rings movie. Yeah, because people go see the sites where they yeah shoot. go see where the movie is. Is it was is the movie? I've, I know Lord of the Rings is the biggest thing. I've not watched Lord of the Rings, but is it uh? Like the mountains and the, yeah. it's beautiful, yeah, yeah. It's no, a, I know that it's a yeah. There's a uh, Mordor. I mean, look at like that's that's like Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Like it looks like that. It's the three movies are twelve hours long. It's also volcanoes and they are great though. Pretty diverse. Landscape. I wouldn't recommend any of the other stuff, but those three are good. Like the Hobbit, and that's all right. But you watch Lord of the Rings. I feel 
Well, yeah, I, I don't watch them now, but I did watch them in the past. Yeah, <clears throat> they are really good. They're they're literally allegorical Christian. But literature. did you watch? I uh, threw the DVDs away. Yeah, <laughs> it's literally <laughs> Christian allegory. It's like a Christian story. Yeah, but it's so he's a wizard. I don't get into wizards. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he, this guy's a, yeah. yeah he, he's this in, guy's he's in with the system. Yeah, Tolkien might have meant it that way, but God says, "Don't be messing around with wizards." Mm-hmm. And then the wizard. I don't said, think Tolkien's doing spells. I think he's just writing a fantasy story about people doing spells. Yeah, was so it he, he and C.S. Lewis like best friends? Mm-hmm. They were buddies. You don't like C.S. Lewis? Either. I do. I do. Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe. I never watched that though. I won't. <laughs> I don't. It's like his main. Thing. I know. No, I mean I like his books and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Is right. uh, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, same vibe, or is it completely different? No, Lord of no. the Rings is much better. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Harry the Harry Potter's in the real world. Lord yeah. of the Rings is in Middle Earth, so yeah. it's like Middle Ages knights and that kind of stuff. Not knights. It's like a whole thing to watch it. Yeah, it's a whole world. No, it's a whole world. Like like they're it. all like four yeah. hours long. It's a lot, but it's awesome. But it's a lot. I think they're each. I think total they're twelve hours long. I just read this, and there's one scene in, out of all twelve hours that's not shot in New Zealand. Really? What yeah. scene is that? I don't know. I did. I couldn't it goes find to, it. Seven uh, Eleven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the wizard goes in there. So when I look up famous New Zealanders, I could name. Well, I guess I could name two out of these three. Can, can you guys guess anybody famous from New Zealand? Nah. Well, Peter Jackson, who directed. Oh, the oh okay. okay. That's the first one I thought of. Flight of the Concords. Oh yeah. yeah. So Peter Jackson was like, maybe we just do it here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do it in my backyard. Yeah. And then the singer Lord. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I know her. From New Zealand. Yeah. A lot of the Concords are great. They I are really so I saw them so at great. the amphitheater here in Nashville. Yeah. Oh, really? Got in a huge fight with Lucy at that concert. Did not have fun. Oh, really? Oh, tell yeah. us what happened. I don't even remember. Something yeah. stupid. Oh, yeah. I remember. We're over it quick, but <laughs> you remember <laughs> yeah. all about it? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, anyway. So that was pretty recent. 2000. No, years ago. Uh, not that recent. Were you married? Anyway, sorry I brought it up. But that's what then? I remember about that concert. Mm. No, we weren't married. Oh, we okay. just started dating. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, I, I saw know. them at Zany's. They did a pop in set. Um, Mitch Fattel was the headliner. Mm-hmm. And then they were going to be at TPAC or something. They asked to do a pop in set, and word got out they were going to be there. So I went down to Zany's. Bottom was full. Top was even. Top was empty. Yeah. And I just sat up there and watched them. They're very funny. Yeah. All right. All right. That's a shame. They're funny, and I think Mitch Fatale's funny. Yeah. So that's a shame that they, that the two of them did. Well, a they show. probably got yeah two of them. It wasn't well. I think out. it was like last minute. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh. All right. Well, that's it. I'm in Australia. All right, dude. Hope you're having fun down there, man. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, man. You've learned a lot now. Yeah. I know a lot of stuff. Uh yeah, I you just using local pumped. openers? Or are you bringing somebody who's coming? Uh, with Joe you? Zimmerman will be with oh, me. Oh, nice. Uh, he's uh, I, you know, they, he's a big bird guy. Mm, yeah, bird watching. So it's like uh, some oh, of the craziest exciting. birds are over there. So I thought he'd be enjoy it. But I think we will have some local openers too. Yeah, my buddy Nick Rado is a New Zealand comic. Uh, he's a he's uh friends with Flight of the Concords. And, oh yeah, yeah. Hmm. Uh, all right. Well, that's it. Uh, we will uh, see you. Uh, I'm a uh, uh, pro oh, uh, All right. No. Okay. I will be uh, at the Grand Ole Opry this Friday. Whoa. Be back there. I think it's the Royal Opry. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We don't, we know, don't know. But I think there's going to be people there and a band and everything. So this Friday, Grand Ole Opry. I know Rhett Atkins is on the show. I don't know who else. But oh, it's big time. It'll be fun. Nice. I've got, I don't know when I can call it a tour, but I've got a big, to the end of the year, I'm headlining places every weekend. So take a look at my in, in social media, AaronWeberComedy.com. I'm going everywhere. August alone, I'm going to Denver and Louisville and Cleveland and, and, and Des Moines and, and Boston, Pittsburgh. I'm going everywhere. So come out and see me. We're having fun out here on the road. Well, I don't know exactly when this is coming out, but um... July 26th. Um, so I, August 5th, I'm going to be in Austin, Texas at the Paramount theater. 
So wow. I'd like to sell that out. That'd be great. So please come there. And uh, my website, DustySlay.com, I got dates all the way through the year as well. It's going to be a hot second half of the year. And uh, I'm pumped. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, I'll be in Australia. Then uh, I got the Alaska State Fair. Nice. Uh, right. In August. And then we start back up in September. Uh, so, yeah. All right. We'll go see everybody. Uh, that's it. We're good. Uh, all right. We love you. I hope you have a wonderful week. And uh, see you next week. Bye. Nate Land is produced by Nate Land Productions and by me, Nate Bargetzi, and my wife, Laura, on the Audio Boom platform. Recording and editing for the show is done by Genovations Media. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to catch us next week on the Nate Land Podcast. <laughs>